Uh, the recording is starting. Yep, we're all set. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the meeting of the Village of Numeranek uh, Board of Architectural Review on May 20th. Um, we have the full board here, uh, so we have a quorum and we can proceed. Um, the, <coughs> excuse me, um, obviously we're doing this uh, virtually um, as we go through the meetings. If there's any people in the audience who wish to have questions, neighbors or other interested parties, um, at the end of each session, I'll try to remember to ask uh, for you to, uh, um, if, there's, if there's any questions or uh, comments. Um, but should I forget, or if you have questions or comments during the course of the meeting, please raise your hand so that uh, Amber can uh, see that and you can be, be brought in. If you are an, an applicant and you have more than one person here, I would ask that all of the people who are parties to the applicant sign on and, and become uh, panelists, even if only your representative, your architect or somebody is doing all the talking. But just in the event that you have, you feel like you need to add something or say something, then, you know, we could miss you if you're trying to raise your hand or come in later or something. So, you know, you don't need to say anything, you know, but at least be there in the background in the event that something should come up that would uh, involve your participation. Um, that said, I think that we are ready to start. Um, so let's, let me begin by introducing the board members. Um, I'm uh, Bill Binzer, I'm the chair. Then we have uh, the uh, board members are Athena uh, Makish, uh, Andrew Wallowitz, Cindy Lee, Yvonne Levin, and um, well, that's the board members. Um, and then also uh, Amber uh, Noack, the, uh, the village uh, planner here, and, and Barbara Ritter, who is the clerk of the works. Um, I guess Dennis is not here right now, but may join later. Okay, with that, let's get started. Um, and let's start with the uh, uh, minutes from the last meeting. Um, hopefully everybody's had a chance to review them. Are there any comments, questions, corrections, or, or anything on the uh, last meeting's minutes? No. All right, there being no. no Comments then, could I have a motion to uh, vote to approve them? I motion to approve. And I second. Okay, any opposed? Okay, very good. Um, then let's uh, move on to continued business. Uh, it was not concluded in previous meetings. Um, and so that would be uh, one applicant, which is uh, 1519 North James Street. Um, the applicant present. Yes, uh, this is Mike Mealy. I'm the engineer for the applicant. Uh, I am here. Okay, hello. Yes, um, just a review. Um, I'm sure you remember this project from last time. It's a rooftop solar mounted application. Uh, there were some concerns from the board just of kind of how the panels were laid out. They were um, just not very regular. So we kind of went back and we were sort of in the midst of a redesign uh, at the meeting. And I know the homeowner had jumped on and said that they were working on another design. So since then, and I do, I do just quickly want to ask, is the homeowner on the call? And if so, could you please, uh, or he raised hand. Okay. I got you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so I'll continue if, if the homeowner has any comments while we're moving forward. So pretty much we went back, um, we redesigned it with the idea of production, which is kind of the most important when it comes to the rooftop solar, along with um, uh, aesthetics and being symmetrical. So the, we, we came back with the first design, um, which keeps the number of panels the same, 
um, is the original proposal um, of 21. Uh, we're able to maintain our, our fire setbacks, but they're, as you can see, they're much more symmetrical and we feel looks a lot better. Yeah, you know, Michael, you're not sharing your screen. I don't know if you think you are. Um, yeah. We don't see your face. Uh, okay. and... <clears throat> it's converting right now. Is that better? Well, yep. I still see your face. But no, no, you need to hit share screen at the bottom of the screen, and then you need to select which screen it is that you're going to share, and you need to hit OK. Okay. Go back to apologize. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah, is that better? Yes, that's mm -hmm. good. Yes. I apologize. I've only done this like 10,000 times. Anyway, <laughs> the, the first one on the left that talks about the, the 25, the 21 black uh, with white panels, uh, that is consistent with what we had before with regards to um, production and number of panels. Um, these are all black with white trim. Um, like we said, a little bit more symmetrical, but keeps our production um where it needs to be uh, um, mike would you mind starting with the other presentation because it shows all the neighbors and everything the other file okay one second um if we can i got to pull that one up but i just wanted to get there because the the front the front on uh, i think is what we started with last time and that was kind of where we generated the comments well if any right, of the board you have, you have two schemes, the, the one on the left, which is the smaller black and white panels, and the one on the right, which is the larger all black panels, which I believe is somewhat less efficient for you. Yeah, we're losing about 25% um, of the capacity um, with the, um, they're not so much smaller, they're just a different size. And with having to use the bump out for uh, fire setbacks with the chimney, we weren't able to get a black with white trim panel with the um, number to match. So these are the two that can fit symmetrically and with um, proper fire access. So I'm a little um, confused. So which is the more, which is the better? One with the more panels. The one with the the one that has 21, which is the black with the white trim. That the gives on us the, left. the one on the left. That is giving okay. us the maximum production that we're looking for. Um, we we knew that the board was concerned about being symmetrical and also about being, you know, the black on black panels where it's all black. So that is kind of what is shown on the right, but with about 25 uh, less, 25% less production from the homeowner. Thank you. I'm curious, because is it is it because it's a different efficiency panel? It certainly isn't 25% less. I mean, unless that's just because your rendering is shows it. No, um, it's, it's okay. less panels. It's less number of panels. On I understand that, but in your rendering, it is not 25% less surface area. No. Okay, so the, the black and white panels are 390 watts. The black on black are 420. Uh, but we can only fit 16 of the black on black versus 21 of the black on white. Uh, so it's actually 15% less. 15% less. Yeah, that's yeah. what I read in the material. Yeah, that's what 100%. I recall reading too. Yeah. Yes, uh-huh, right. All right. Yeah. Mark, do you have the other presentation? Because it shows the neighbors, because I know the board was asking about that last I'm week. I'm trying to while we're talking. It's right. not pulling up. I'm looking for it right now. But I don't want to switch off as we're going. One second. <clears throat> and I, I guess I would like to see the actual layout, like, is an engineering drawing, because we yeah. know those. We know some of these perspective renderings are a little off from what's actually there. And everything loaded, ready.
¿no? Así en inglés, sí. It's like Michael has maybe dropped off, huh? Yeah, I don't know if he's, he might not be aware of it, I guess, I don't know. Uh, Mike, you there? Maybe we should move on to the next, the next business, I don't know. Well, um, I don't know, Carla, we, we seem to have lost Mike, and I don't know if he even knows. He may be chatting away and not realizing he's... Yeah, I don't know. You know what, let me um, get onto my computer and I'll sign on. If you want to move on to the next person, I'll sign on to the Zoom and, and share, see if I can figure out how to share the okay. document. Okay, let, let Amber know when you're back, you got back together, and we will then uh, put you in then. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right. Can I just say, Carla, the best way is to have everything open on your desktop, all of it, okay. open your desktop, and then just share your desktop, not okay. each particular application. Okay, I will do. All right, thanks. Okay, so let's hold that in abeyance and uh, move on to uh, the first uh, for the new business. And first up is uh, 15 Shore Road. Mm -hmm. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Rex Gedney, Crozier Gedney Architects, uh, representing Neil and Arlene Wexler, 15 Shore Road. I'd like to share my screen with you. Um, we've been doing some uh, mostly interior renovations, but uh, of course, they did trigger a few window changes. I can walk you around the plan. But more substantially is we're redoing this front entrance. Um, oddly enough, the front door is kind of wedged into the corner and we're going to remove this wooden structure which is half on the building uh, and uh, do something a little more simpler to try to pull the front door and give it a little more presence instead of being uh, uh, stuck in the corner of the, uh, mm -hmm. of the building. This, um, this is what we're proposing to do, is to remove that uh, wooden structure, uh, uh, expand the window above a small Juliet balcony. It's just a wrought iron balcony, purely for decoration, and a small pediment over the, uh, the front door. So that's, um, that's what we're doing for the front entrance. Um, I will note that the, the house is, 15 Shore Road is located at the end of Shore Road, which uh, straddles the border of Rye and Mamarnock. Um, some of the other changes, there was a window behind this conservatory uh, that we changed out to a door so it had access to the deck on the side. And this window uh, is in the kitchen and it was changed to accommodate uh, the counter, counter heights. And that's really the extent of uh, our proposal. Do you have like a plan of the entry way? Yeah. Okay. So this, everything is happening in the in the round in the round. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that triangle is. Also happening in a, in a curved wall, right? Yes. Or not? Or, or yes. kind of? Okay. 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 No, straightforward enough. Did you? Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I guess I would say, and I and this is not. An objection, but it's uh, 
between the uh, pediment, the Juliet balcony, the shutters all on around turret, the turret. I think you've got a pretty eclectic uh, architectural panoply going on here. <laughs> well, under the, uh, by previous owners, it's already been made, made pretty eclectic itself. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Can you can we look at the elevation again? The main entrance, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a basic Greek revival, Romanesque, uh, mm -hmm. uh, colonial uh, style. <laughs> but we also, we looked at several styles. Another one was something similar to this. This is not what we submitted to you. Mm -hmm. A little yeah. simpler. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mostly just teasing. It's fine. <laughs> Pardon me? I'm mostly just teasing. It's, it's okay. <laughs> and if, if you've been down Shore Road, um, and if you yeah. looked at the photographs, there's been a large project going on uh, abutting mm. this property. Yes. And, yeah, we, we, they've, yes. been, they've been here. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. sure they we have. remember. We yes. remember them. Yes. Yeah. It's just that uh, triangles, I think, is kind of funny. I mean, if you guys like it, that's fine. In the in a on a curved wall, it's, it's a little more difficult. Yeah, it's tucked away. I, I can't imagine it. Yeah, know, yeah. No, I think it's it looks better. Wood, it looks know. better than the existing condition. Yeah, it's, it's better than the wooden shed, anyhow. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any any uh, other comments from the board? No, not really. I really like that rotunda on the left. What, what is it exactly? The, the function? Is it it's a, a it's, uh, it's a conservatory. Uh, ah, conservatory. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, it, it's nice. It's a, it's a challenging room to furnish to yeah. heat, to control uh, the yeah. light, the sun, the heat, the cold. So, I bet. I bet. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Amber, are there any audience participants who wish mm -hmm. to? Raise any comments or questions? I do not see anyone who wishes to speak. Okay. All right, so given that there's no further comments or questions from the board or the audience, perhaps someone would like to motion to vote. I motion. I'll second it. Okay, anybody opposed? Nope. All right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all very much and have a mm -hmm. good evening. Thank, thank you. You thank too. You. <coughs> all right. Are uh, Amber, are the uh, solar panel folks ready? I, yes. Yes. Okay. Now I see both. We can cycle back to them then. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Uh, now, how do I share my screen? Down oh. at the bottom center. Oh, I'll let him go. Okay. There should be a, a, a large green button at the bottom that says share screen. And so you'll need to click on that. I apologize, board, that I lost service. It's There's a lot of bandwidth going on in my house right now. I really apologize. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Are you able to do it? Do you want me to try to pull mine up or? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, it's, it's now asking me about <laughs> security and privacy. <laughs> um. yeah, this ah. is. Okay. Yep, so this is the one view um, of the house, obviously without any panels. Uh, this is kind of just the vicinity map. Yeah shown what's there. This is the view kind of from the neighbors. I know the board was talking about that it's open just so you can kind of see the angle. Uh, 
this is a view from looking at the house um, across oh, the street. Hold on, back, back up, Mike. Sure. So the people that are looking directly at our house are the two left-hand ones. And then the third house, the white one, is actually faced, uh, is kind of aimed down the street. And then the fourth one is the one right on the corner. And they really, there's a lot of trees between them and us, as you can see. So that's really the main viewers of these panels. Okay. Um, and this was the, the original design we were talking about with the 21 panels black um, with white trim. I know that one of the members was asking, uh, this is the side view um, with them superimposed with that presentation. Um, I don't know, they were looking for kind of what it looked like from an engineering um, plan view, which is what's here. So you can kind of see uh, how it's much more symmetrical than our previous um, presentation. And then these are the type of panels. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for these to be black on black or, or not? The, the, they need to have the, the white trim. Unfortunately, the um, black on black that was this size has been discontinued. The only black uh -huh. on black that they offer now is slightly larger, which is why we could only fit 16 panels. I see. Um, and yeah. Mike shows you the other, you'll see the layout right. is actually a four mm -hmm. by four square. Yeah. No, I, I think that you have managed to at least give, uh, you know, there's a good geometry to yeah. it. It's much because more pleasing. These, these are much more clean yeah. than what you had last time. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, personally speaking for myself in this case, I don't mind the black on white because the the house has, you know, black shutters, white trim windows. It, you know, it kind of, yeah. it's yeah. not. Yeah. I think it looks, I think I like the ones with the white trim better with the house, actually. Yeah, I think they're both the rendering. They're both acceptable, so I would be inclined to say, yeah, go for the higher efficiency. But uh, yeah, what do other people think? Yeah, my things are too. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, I'm just curious. So, so this is actually a different panel than you had before. No, this is the one that was presented last week. Uh, we just didn't have any renderings of it. Um, originally, we wanted black on black. Uh, but as I said, they only make the largest size now. And the new black on black are very, very black. Uh, so it's, it's, it's almost okay. too black. We've got a gray roof. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, I guess I'm just, I'm just, I guess I don't really understand how it's the same panel, but it's now yeah. they outline up, but okay. Oh, they were just arranged differently before. So they had, um, uh, they just, <laughs> it was just not lined up. That's all. I played with it and found out it could line up. So. This was All right. what was supposed to be presented last week, but the old plan got in there. Yeah, I think it, it looks fine mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any neighbors or anything? Mm. Amber? <clears throat> I do not see anyone who wishes to speak. Then I motion. I second. Mm -hmm. Any? I'm good. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Um, very good. Thank you. Appreciate your coming back and getting them straightened out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's different yeah. that they line up now? I remember looking at it though, and there was yeah. something different yeah. about it, but I don't recall what mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Um just um just to clarify what we voted on, I, I imagine are we saying that we are okay with either scheme or only the first scheme or only, you know. I I did vote for the the scheme that gave them the better uh, yeah. energy supply. I mean, since it looks good, I mean. I assume this one. I'm sorry. Are they still on? Um, I thought we were voting for the black and white one. I thought yeah. yes. I, I didn't. I'm, yeah. I'm bad. I didn't clarify that. But yes. Um, yes. I, yes. I, I think I was okay with either one, but um, I. I imagine they prefer the higher energy one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Yes, we prefer uh -huh. the higher energy, the black on black and white one. 
Okay. 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 So moving on then with the continued uh, new business, uh, the next one up is uh, 515 Fifth Street. Hello, you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm going to share the screen. I don't know my own oh, ear. There's only him in it. <laughs> okay. Oop, where'd it go? That's good. You see it? Okay. Yeah, just go now to your um Okay. Your project. Okay, let me start back here. Okay, this is the existing house. Uh during a storm last year, a tree fell and knocked off this mm. corner of the house. Uh, what we're proposing to do is extend the dormer on each side and, and have a new deck to the right here. Uh, these are the houses across the street on the Franklin side of the corner. Mm. These are across the street on the Fifth Street side. And this is the house to the right of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we're proposing is, these are the two dormers on either side of the existing dormer. We have to repair the uh, chimney and the roof on this section of the corner here. Uh, the siding is gonna match the existing. And then we're proposing a deck to the right side here, which would be uh, a white composite railing, lattice below and a, uh, uh, a composite decking, uh, the color is a light gray, it's called coastal. Uh, let's go to, uh, here's the plan. This is the existing dormer, and this is the, with the extension on the either side. We're gonna have a new uh, slider installed here, out to access for the new deck. And this is the side mm -hmm. elevation with the new slider. And the uh, dormer, the pitch will match the existing dormer. And uh, that's basically it. Now, the side plan shows the deck at the back, at the rear, right? I'm sorry, say that but again? The, the, um, the side plan shows the deck at the rear of the house? Well, it's a corner lot. This is Franklin. And I mean, this is Fifth, Fifth Street. Oh, uh, OK. And this so is we're Franklin. facing. The house okay, so is facing you're, fifth. They're facing fifth. Okay. Right. I got you. Okay. Oops. Got it. Yeah, okay. It was a little confusing. All right. I got it. Okay. Um, well, it seems relatively uh, straightforward. Are there any uh, yeah. comments from many board members on this? Mm. Nope. Definitely an improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's even better than having a black tarp over a hole in the roof, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Amber, are there any uh, audience participants with uh, questions or comments? You're muted, Amber. Sorry, we have a John Siegler. You're, you're yes. able to speak. Okay. I am. Thank you. Um, I'm continuing continue mm -hmm. to the property that's in, uh, 
being uh, referenced and the deck proposed would um, abut my backyard. So my concern is how far, there's not much room in, it's, it's the backyard, it's not, it's, it's not the side or it's, it's, it's their only, the only yard. Um, how far back is the deck gonna go and how high is it gonna go? Okay, uh, perhaps you could put the plans back up. Um, mm -hmm. Steven? Uh, yeah, they're still there. I don't know how to, how do I move you out of the way? <laughs> you share screen again. And is there a view from the actual backyard that we could see? Yeah, because it it's gonna hover over my my backyard. So, you well, know, which which property are you in relation to us? Well, thirteen oh seven Franklin Avenue. There's about four. Okay, feet you're to the left. Yes, okay. Between the two homes. Right. Okay. It's grandfathered, you know, but you would never be able to build now with that closely. But uh, so that so that's you know it it impact it would impact my my uh, my house. Right. Well, it's it's the same um, <clears throat> setback the as the house. Can you bring the plan back up, please? Sure. Yeah, but that house ends where mine does. Now this is going to extend further back, is my point. Right. It's going to be 16 feet back. Mm -hmm. 16 feet. Yeah. It's almost half the backyard, I would think. Well, it's, we're, right, we're still 27 problem? feet from yeah. the other property line. Can we, can we get Steven, the plant's still not. <clears throat> I'm sorry, say it again. <laughs> oh. Plan is still um, not up. You need to share your screen again so that we can see the plans. Uh, it's the green button on the bottom that says share screen. Yeah, I know, but I don't see it here. I mean, I'm. All right, hold on a second. So the prior owners had a. Um, so oh, there it is. Set up to what uh, actually two owners ago mm -hmm. had, had a. I've been here a long time. Had a similar, but I just want to make sure that what faces my backyard is going to be enclosed on their end. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You see it now. Mm -hmm. We see okay. your screen, but not the plans yet. You don't see the plan of the deck no. here? We just see the menu. Uh, the fire Let's see. Stop sharing. <clears throat> Recalls current tabs again. Hmm. From the renderings I saw before, it looked as though it was um, it was a there was a privacy element on you know facing my backyard. I I, I can't tell. I don't see it now. All right, I'm gonna try again. See if you memory here. Okay. <clears throat> you see it now? No. No. Uh, no. You need you need to when when you click share screen, there should be an option to just share your whole. Um, desktop, and then you would just navigate to the plans. So there are usually individual screens that you can share, or you can share right. your desktop. So we just see Zoom. We see your Zoom browser. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, let's try this again. All right, share screen, which I did. How about now? No, we, we, we just see the files. So if you've opened a file, we don't see it. You need to open the file. It, it seems like you're not sharing your full desktop. You just... Frankly, if you answer that question, I don't necessarily. Well, the, the, I, I can pull the porch up the isn't enclosed. What are the plans that we're looking for? I'm sorry, which which document? What is it called? 
What's the name of the file that you're looking to open? Uh, I don't know. They're... You're not sure. I think we're we're getting there now. It's a fifty okay. plant. <laughs> Thanks. All right, hi there. You got it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. So the Amber. Where's the deck depicted on here? There it is. There it is. The deck is right here. Okay. And um, so my guess my yard would be to the left, right? Oh, there. Okay. But yeah. The, it looks like, yeah. The, the deck is oh. about, I would say, four feet off the ground. Okay. And there's, there's no covering over it. Yeah. My fence is six feet, so I don't have a problem with that. If it's four feet, it won't, it won't extend above the, my current fence. Right. Oh, then, then that's okay. I my I didn't want something hovering over the backyard, and I you know I I'm a good neighbor. I don't want to have my my privacy impacted. That's fine. Yeah, fair enough. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Four feet is is fine. Okay. All right. You, you see how it is now there on the. On the yeah, and it appears as though what faces me, it there's it's a solid. Um, it, it looks like a, a privacy area, uh, you know, that looks like complete fenced. I think it's just a deck with a railing. Yeah. But it's, so this is, be railing, looking. is the railing going to be an open rail or is it, what is it going to be? Yes, it'll be an open spindle rail. Uh -huh. and I, I, yeah, I guess that's fine. I mean, it's. Yeah, this would be, your property would be on a right here and this would be the railing and the deck's about four feet. Right. Off the ground here. Okay. So if you have six foot fences like in here, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not any higher than the uh, the floor that's already there with the windows facing your mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, but they don't extend back where the fence would, but that that's okay. No. I, I want to be a good neighbor here. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that that's okay. Okay. I mean, I right. anticipate maybe some point in the future doing something here, so mm -hmm. but the same will be extended. Okay. All right. Okay. And That's the extent. Put together and have a beer. Okay. <laughs> <There> you go. <laughs> All right. Any uh, any other uh, <clears throat> thing? Discussion topics? Anybody have any comments or questions? Audience, Amber. No. I don't see anyone else who wishes to speak. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. Stephen. Um, if nobody had any further comments, I guess we could have a motion to vote on it. I'll make a motion. I, I'm in favor. I second. Okay. Anybody opposed? No. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Thank you. And <laughs> on we go. <clears throat> Okay, the next thing up is uh, 720 Saney Avenue. Got a few here that are uh, kind of neighbors of everybody. And, and sorry, Jennifer, is Heather Mitchell the... Um, I believe they're on the call. <clears throat> they're here now. Um, would you like me to start? I'd like, could you just introduce yourself, uh, Jennifer? Yeah, absolutely. Jennifer Hustis from Hustis Tucker Architects. And I'm representing Heather Mitchell and Darren Esco on the 720 Simi Avenue project. Very good. Thank you. Um, so, can you see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. So, um, this is the house here. And um, this is the house to the left. Um, this is the house to the right. This is the house across the street. And um, 
this is on the left side and this is on the right side. So it gives you some sense of the, um, of the neighborhood. Uh, the uh, project consists of a small addition on the second floor in this area here above an existing sunroom. And I'm going to um, go to another file now, I think. Let's see, are, are you able to see the drawing now? No, you still see the pictures. Okay. Um, do you see the drawing now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yes. So this is the front elevation of the house. And um, this is the addition here uh, on the front of the house. And um, the side view is, is right here. So it's there's an existing deck over this one story sunroom. We are gonna maintain some of the deck here uh, which has already access from the bedroom with this door. And this is the extent of the addition here. Um, and I will show you on the plan that, just to make it a little bit bigger. So the addition is, um, we are renovating a bathroom. So uh, the addition is partially a shower and then a closet, a walk-in closet, and a very small little um, home office. This portion right here is the chimney. Um, and the other tiny small portion of the exterior project is a, a built code door for the basement, um, which is right here. And I'll show you the basement plan which is here. So the basement consists of some interior work, nothing on the exterior, um, and the new Bilco door is here. Mm -hmm. okay. If you could, on the elevation, um, my understanding from your notes on the elevation is, uh, notwithstanding how it's rendered this uh this uh, you're gonna have the rest of the house is a, a blue painted uh shake and you're going these this will also be that same blue painted shake yes, yes that's correct so we're going to match the um the shingles the wood shingles we're going to match the um and the paint color of the wood shingles we'll be matching the the shutters to the existing shutters and the roof material to the existing asphalt roof so everything is matching the um there will be a new railing the existing railing is is not in great shape and this will be a composite railing um painted white to match the trim on the house okay all right looks simple enough to understand are there any uh, questions or comments from the board members yeah. yes just so there's an existing um, balcony or terrace something there. That's correct. Existing. Okay. Ah, yeah. oh, the whole the whole. Uh, side. Right. It, it's okay. over the whole sunroom right now. Okay. Yeah. So over that. Whole yeah. Room. Sure. Yeah, I like this elevation. Mm -hmm. It follows the same slope and everything. It's good. I appreciate that it, it's on the plane of the set, set part that's set back and not the main house. That's, that's good. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I think it mm -hmm. seems, seems fine. But uh, any, any other uh, board member questions or comments? Mm -mm. Okay. I Amber, think this uh, looks good, straightforward. Yeah. 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 Amber, audience? I do not see anyone who wishes to speak. Okay, uh, a motion to vote, perhaps. Aye, motion. A second. Any opposed? No. Somebody said something, but I couldn't hear. No, no, no. Opposed. Not for me either. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Looks good. Okay. All right. Very good. good luck. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Have a nice evening. Okay. Okay, um, 
Next up, 652 Shore Acres Drive. Uh, Hello, um, <clears throat> Brandon Stewart here representing Michael Lewis Architects and the owners, uh, Caroline Young and Stephen Tractor-Boyt, who are also with us down there. Hi. Um, also, Hi. Katie Haas, um, landscape architect uh, with William Kenny and Associates is here. Um, <clears throat> so just to, let me share here, just to give you um, a sense from, from the street of, of our property here, um, it's one of the more heavily wooded lots along Shore Acres. It's this, this house here. Um, even though we're, there's some dressing up of the, of the existing facade, most of the work that's occurring is, is not really visible from the street. Um, and if we look at the, these aerial images, you can see here's the front of the house we were just looking at. Um, the house stretches back quite far and it's a pretty long lot stretching back to the water. Um, we're proposing to remove these existing uh, impervious stone patios that wrap we, around we the house. We don't see any aerial view. We're just oh, still sorry. seeing the street view. Oh, sorry. Let me try this again. How's that? Good. Yes. Okay. So um, here's the, this impervious, existing impervious uh, stone mm -hmm. patio that we're removing or that wraps mm -hmm. around. Um, we are, the, these are two or three different levels of, uh, of additions that were added to the main center hall colonial mm -hmm. in the seventies, we think. Mm -hmm. Um, and the footprint of the first floor is to remain intact, uh, with one exception over on this side where there's a uh, mudroom, one story mudroom addition being proposed. Um, other than that, we're, we're lifting straight up on this portion of the house. Uh, with a new master suite. We're also um, raising up from the garage uh, a second story as well for a second story office that's uh, connected to the master suite via uh, what we're calling a breezeway bridge. Uh, we'll see in a minute. And lastly, a, a pool cabana, a one story pool cabana that's extending off of the rear of the garage back here. Uh, all of that is kind of connected with a series of decks which the upper deck actually protrudes towards the water less than slightly less than this existing one does and then uh, culminating down here at the bottom in a in a, a 20 by 35 foot pool in ground um, if we swing around to this other view um, you can see one of our challenges with this project is this uh, challenges and and great benefits of the property is this this uh, enormous pin oak tree uh, that's very prominent not just on our property but kind of in this whole uh, area of the basin um, so the we've located the pool far enough away from that tree for it not to pose any danger to the tree um, but of course that puts us fairly close to the house so we've tried to fit all of our our, our program in between the very important tree and then the existing mass of the house. Um, this is the this rendering that we submitted uh, that kind of shows all of the proposed improvements. Um, here's that second story master suite addition above the existing family room uh, and this sort of neck of, of the of other second story functions that connect the center hall colonial in the front to these additions in the rear. And then here's that breezeway bridge you can see um, at connecting to the second story office addition above the garage. And here's that one story uh, pool cabana. And then the, the decks that I mentioned, <clears throat> and then the in-ground pool, which um, we're, we're happy to see the owners were very uh, against having too much paving around the pool. So it's set in a very natural setting with just some paving stones around this corner here. And then there's sort of a, a low stone wall that um, kind of connects the pool to the deck. 
<clears throat> and then lastly, I'll show you uh, two of our, just two of the- Excuse me, is the pool entered from the deck or from the grass? Say that again? How do you enter the pool? Um, so these, it, this doesn't show up great in the, in the rendering, but there's some, some loose bluestone pavers with grass joints uh, that connect, well, connect from the at bottom of these, these risers on the deck here to the edge of the pool. So um, the shallow end of the pool is here where I'm hovering, and you can see a slight indication of where the stairs will come from this corner of the pool down into the water, and then the deep end of the pool will be at this end. And while we're on the rendering, what's going on under that the, the deck on the uh, left side and the, the cabana? So this is proposed to be heavily planted and the supports for the deck and for the, the cabana are, they're gonna, in, they're gonna be recessed further than what you see here. Um, and you, you can see that the, we've ghosted sort of the plantings in front of this area. This, we also use this rendering before the Harbor Coastal Commission and the planning board. And it was really important for us to show that even though um, portions of this project are in the wetland buffer and also in the flood zone, we wanted to show that where everything that's protruding towards the water's edge is being constructed above that base flood elevation. So we, we felt it was important to show uh, if we were to color in all these plantings and show those supports recessed, this would read as like a solid mass that was uh, going all the way to grade when in reality uh, it's proposed to be kind of floating above. So um, that's, that's one area that, of the rendering that doesn't show quite what it'll look like. We're hoping to uh, have all of that structure hidden from view, both by plantings and by the fact that it's recessed uh, so that you really do just see this, this curvilinear uh, planter around the decks that appears to be just kind of floating above the vegetation. Okay, and can you tell us about the fence while we're on this drawing? Sure, the, most of the fencing you're seeing here, well, in fact, all of it is existing uh, iron fencing, which um, runs on both of the side property lines and along the top of the T wall. Uh, the owners have two, two small children, so they've, they've already started making some improvements safety-wise to the site. Um, the actual pool enclosure will consist of those um, existing iron fences along with an iron gate that is proposed uh, to run underneath the breezeway bridge to complete the enclosure around the pool. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions on the rendering here? What's the difference in height? What is it that um, the cabana and the, um, the hot top from the, the deck to the, uh, to so the ground? Good is question. Like four feet? The finished mm -hmm. floor of both the main house and the cabana is at 14 mm -hmm. feet above sea level. Um, mm -hmm. the, this upper deck is just slightly mm -hmm. below that. And then the grade down here around the pool is around uh, seven or eight feet. So you're right, about, this is about a six foot drop. That was another challenge is how do, you, how do we get mm -hmm. people from, from the mm -hmm. 14 foot level down to the eight foot level with not, mm -hmm. very much, uh, not very much space to work with because of the constraint mm -hmm. of that tree. So we've tried mm -hmm. to um, mm -hmm. level it as, as nicely as we could. Mm -hmm. um, so lastly, I'll just, I'll show you here, the, these are two uh, large bay windows that are proposed uh, to replace <coughs> the windows, the four windows that used to be here on the facade um, mm -hmm. with a new front door with a canopy over it that matches the bay windows. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll go to the rear elevation as well. Here's the existing, you can see those uh, additions from the 70s that are being removed, at least the roofs of them are being removed. Again, the footprint of them is generally staying the same. Um, and then here's the proposed where you can see the addition here and the addition to the left with the, the breezeway bridge connecting them. Here's that mm -hmm. final piece of um, iron fence that mm -hmm. finishes mm -hmm. the enclosure mm -hmm. around the pool. Mm -hmm. uh, materials wise, I, we submitted the packet of all the materials. I won't bore you by going through that. 
packet, but um, just quickly, Hardy board, um, uh, Marvin windows and doors, an Ipe wood deck uh, for both of the levels of the deck. Um, again, some of that field stone around these retaining walls mm -hmm. close to the pool. Oh, here, this perhaps shows a little bit more what we had in mind yeah. with the plantings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. And we, we've worked with, with Katie who will um, pipe in in a minute here to really make sure that this gets well screened and that we have things that will really thrive, uh, mm -hmm. partially tucked under the deck, partially protruding out from the deck. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, with that, I will, I'll, I'm going to put Katie's plan up on the screen and I'll let her kind of walk you through briefly some of the improvements uh, plantings wise. Can you, can you see that Katie? I can. Thank you, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Haas. I'm a landscape architect. I'm representing um, the client and William Kenny Associates this evening. We're a landscape architecture and ecological firm. We've been involved with um, all different parts of this um, uh, project and the approval. So um, I won't go into more detail about the um, existing conditions because Brandon did such a good job, but just to, to reiterate the, the pin oak was a beautiful tree that we love to protect. And um, we've gone through, worked with our arborist um, as well as the engineer to fi uh, figure out a way to make, um, to save that tree um, and have low impact development um, that would affect that tree. So uh, regarding the softscape, which uh, as the plants for the landscape, uh, we're proposing 90% native plants to soften the space. Um, evergreen and flowering trees were carefully selected to provide screening um, while flowering shrubs and perennials brighten the space and soften the transition from the deck, which uh, Brandon had mentioned. Um, only one non-native crab apple will need to be removed um, because of this um, addition. Uh, and the planters on the deck will have trailing um, uh, plants that will help also soften the transition um, from the upper deck down to the pool level. Uh, we uh, envision these to be changed throughout the season so that they can um, have seasonal interest all year long. Um, throughout the, in this space. Uh, as you can see in this image too, we uh, are showing some irregular stepping stones around the pool. That's, um, that's the hardscape that is proposed around the pool. That would be just a um, New England field stone um, as well as that would be the same material for the walls as well as the pool coping to make sure everything matches. Um, along the seawall, we're proposing to keep all the existing plantings. There are some mature plantings that exist and uh, because we're not going to be in those areas, it made sense to keep them as well as there's three existing smaller trees that will remain at the site as well. That's a, a quick summary <laughs> of the landscape. And if anybody has any questions, happy to what is the pool? Yeah, yeah, pool equipment going to be. Great question. That is um, something we, we wanted both from in the environmental purposes of, of being inhabiting part of the wetland buffer and just to keep it out of the way. It's proposed to be completely enclosed in the um, inside of the garage. So if I zoom out here on this plan, you can see yeah. there's one story cabana and the pool equipment room sits yeah. just behind yeah. that. That's great. Uh, yeah. And we've confirmed with the, with the pool, uh, the pool contractor that that distance is indeed just fine to for the pool equipment so it's mm -hmm. um it's totally hidden from view and also happily it gets to sit way up above uh mm -hmm. the, any of the flood areas at all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good well it's a beautiful rendering and a beautiful property and I hope there are no floods. I know. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I really appreciate the fact that you are saving that tree. That's very nice. The yeah. landscape is beautiful. Credit to the owners on that. Mm. We, we didn't have to convince them to keep that at all. They, that was that from day one, that was a part of the deal. <clears throat> yeah. The, right. the rendering seems to show a little bit of a green roof thing going on. Is that I didn't see that on the plan? Yeah, the the extent of the um, of the deck 
from that's accessible from that second story office. It didn't really need to be the full uh, fill out the full footprint of that cabana. So there there are there's an opportunity there for some drop in planters. It's not technically a full green roof that would require uh, the full soil and, and waterproofing and everything. It's so the roofing kind of just runs underneath. And then there's a there's a kind of a cavity for drop in mm -hmm. planters. And the same is true of this um, this area here, which it was one difficult thing about mm -hmm. a, slapping a flat roof on a, a traditional house like this. It doesn't usually fit very well. So we tried we tried to copy that flat element over here to separate the existing family room below from the proposed uh, master suite above. So there's another strip of plantings in that area as well. <clears throat> okay, thank you. All right, any... Um, and, yeah, and so you, you said, well, you're not gonna bore us with the materials, but can you just, can you just sort of run through the, the materials? Like, sure. <laughs> sure. What's, what, what's the siding and everything like that compared to what's there now? Sure. Um, the, what's there now is, here's some existing photos. <clears throat> sort of a greenish, uh, like a light, light greenish uh, siding color with dark shutters. Mm -hmm. And what's proposed is uh, the hardy plank. The color is heathered moss, which is basically the closest thing to the existing color, <clears throat> sort of a light green. Um, the shutters are proposed to be this autumn purple. So again, they'll read, they'll read very dark, similar to what's there now. And then the roofing as well will be fairly dark um, with these timber line. Do we understand that replacing all of the siding and shutters or is this to, supposed to match? Correct, It's a, it'll be all new siding throughout, all new windows and doors throughout. Um, mm -hmm and new new roofing throughout. So it, we're lucky we don't have to patch into any between <clears> old <throat> areas and new areas. Okay. All right. Yep. So, the, so the pick of the color is just because they like the color because you're actually replacing everything. Yes, yep. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I have a quick question. The, uh, I understand that the garage, you had to cut a little bit short because of the, the uh, setback. Correct. Um, and, and then by looking at the elevation, I see the windows are, don't really line up with the rest. Uh, so I guess they're a little higher because you had to do put a little bit of a roof over the, uh, just, yeah, could you just go? Oh, over that? On, the, on the front facade? Uh-huh. Yes, uh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm not just asking. Yeah, uh, the, the existing windows. <clears throat> well, first of all, you're you're um, you're correct yes. with the garage. It, it's uh -huh. the edge of it sits into the setback, and right. we wanted to improve that non-conform existing non-conformity. Sure. So it's proposed to yeah. to suck in and comply. Um, sure. For the windows, the existing the the windows are all very old in this. Uh, as you can imagine, in in the Mm. center hall colonial portion of the house, including mm. these uh, double casements. Mm -hmm. um, now they don't, we have egress windows from those bedrooms on the side. So these don't technically have to be egress. And you're right, mm -hmm. when we put in the, the bay windows, the roof does come up a little bit uh, higher than the existing windows did. Um, no, no, I was referring to the garage elevation. Oh, not, sure. Not the main, yeah. Okay. How how that the garage uh, relates to the little breezeway? Oh and right. The rest. Yeah, <laughs> that was my question. Yeah. Right. Yes. No, I, no, I see. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're right. So the the second story sets back uh, by mm -hmm. quite like um, two or three feet from yeah. the, the wall that the mm -hmm. garage door is in. So that requires mm -hmm. this roof, and this we're trying to keep the pitches on the roofs all mm -hmm. equal. So that does require that yeah. these lift up. The aligning mm. of the of the windows there, um, mm -hmm. we've got much higher ceilings in the mm. uh, office than we do yeah. in the breezeway bridge. Um, okay. And I think it, it's, a, it's a good thing to think about. Um, 
I, the one thing that is good and bad about the pure elevation view is it, it highlights things like this, but it also shows you things that sometimes you'll never see in person, mm -hmm. both because the garage and cabana mm -hmm. is sitting forward and proud of that uh, breezeway mm -hmm. bridge. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so. yeah, I understand. But it's quite uh, the same level with the breezeway only. Yeah, not with the rest of the, not right. with the main facade, I understand. Yeah, it's way, yeah, back, yeah. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so... But yeah, that's that's something we maybe we can look at a little closer there. <clears throat> but it's not even flush with the breezeway, right? It's proud of the no, it's breezeway. yeah, that's true. It's it's um not not way proud of the breezeway, but it's proud by about a foot. <clears throat> right, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think that's that's one thing with the the this breezeway. We've um we went back and forth on having it be more kind of a piece of the of the uh, a and B, or having it be its own element that read as a as a separate piece, and we opted for the latter. We feel like it works better if it's um, the character of it, the scale of it, and the fact that it's it doesn't it's not coplanar on any face with with the buildings that it connects. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that kind of came into it as well. Could you just flip real quick to an uh, overall plan? Sure. Here's the first floor. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. The second floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. No, that breezeway is really nice. Yeah, I think, I, I think that'll be a really a really nice spot there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, any? Uh... <clears throat> I'm good. Okay. Are there any uh, other comments from board members? Chair, hi. This is Dan Strogan, Assistant yep, Building Inspector. How are you? How is everybody? Hi. Been expecting you. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question regarding the condensing units um, outside. Do you have the uh -huh. location on the plan? Sure. <clears throat> You're referring to this area here, Dennis? Correct. Mm hmm. Yep. So they fall within the setbacks. Uh, yes, they do. Yep. Okay. And, and um, what that that area currently just here on the side of the house um, has pretty pretty heavy low vegetation around it. Um, I think some of these plantings will remain and some will get swapped out. Uh, I think Katie has a, a plan for that coming up, but the uh, but yeah, that'll that'll wrap around and continue to screen that area. Okay, and those mechanicals will be raised above the flood base elevation if they are changed out? That's right. Um, okay. And if I show you the site plan quickly, this orange line that you can see kind of sneaking into the side of the house and then sneaking back out again, uh, that's the 15 foot uh, topo line. So mm -hmm. the, the danger zone flood wise is everything seaward of that line um, and the entire existing portion of the house, including where those AC condensers are proposed to be, are well above that uh, that line. So that's we're lucky that 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 whole area is safely out of the flood zone. Okay, and what about the air handlers that are located inside the house? Um, we haven't we haven't placed those yet in plan, though we have we have an attic plan which um, uh, this board hasn't seen yet, but um, we have space for air handlers up there and also in an existing basement, which we also didn't include plans to the existing basement, but it's essentially sits, uh, it's the same footprint as the original portion of the house, uh, down below. Mm -hmm. So there's probably going to be a, at least one air handler down there and one air handler 
in this in the new um, neck between the two buildings in the attic above there. <clears throat> okay, I'm um, just making sure that you have the room inside the home to relocate and not keep them below the flood base elevation. Right. Yep. And one of the one of the Great. benefits of keeping with that semi steep roof angle mm -hmm. is that we do get. Um, we have, I think, four foot five down the spine of, of height from the attic floor to the peak. Uh, and then we get up to about six feet, actually, of attic space in this portion here above this, the master suite. So there's, there's plenty to work with uh, for mechanicals up there. <clears throat> okay, great. Thanks. Okay, I thought you were going to ask about alarming the windows, um, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's gone to the other boards already, and yep. uh, my head my head has reviewed this. Uh -huh. um, the building inspector looked at it, so we'll we'll leave it the way it is. I think it's okay. You just had a, a question on my mm -hmm. for my own interest. The air handlers located in the basement of the main house is the basement above the flood zone. Um, no, it's not. And we we spoke to Frank uh, Tavolacci about this early on in the project, wondering um, what what would be the fate of the existing uh, basement in the front of the house of the front of the property. Uh, due to the fact that it sits behind the floodplain line, but technically the uh, floor of it is below the, mm -hmm. the floodplain elevation. Um, and his take was that <clears throat> for it to be in danger of being flooded, uh, the floodwaters would have to cross the, cross the 15 foot mark and come higher in order to uh, have that, that basement be a problem flood wise. So his take was that we, we would be okay continuing to locate mechanical equipment down there. And I think when, when we go through the, the building department review, I'm sure we'll, uh, both us and them, we'll, we'll pay attention to that closely again and make sure that everything is, is done correctly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Agreed. I was just curious about it. Yeah. Are there any further uh, board or building department questions? <clears throat> okay, and how about from audience members? Um, uh, Amber? I do not see anyone who wishes to speak. Okay. So, okay, I'll take that to mean the neighbors are okay. And um, then that said, could I have a motion to vote then? I motion. I'll second it. Is anyone opposed? No. That was a no. Um, no. Nobody's opposed, right? No. Okay. Very good then. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And next is 850 Rushmore Avenue. Hello. Hello. Um. All right. Uh, my name is Peter Altamari. I'm with Michael Lewis Architects. Um, I'm here representing uh, Jane and Robert uh, Hassler for 850 Rushmore Avenue. And I will share my screen. Uh, do you guys see the elevations? Yes. yes. All right, um, so the existing property is at the corner of Rushmore Avenue and Bleaker Avenue. Uh, this is the property here. Um, these are the images of the neighboring properties uh, around. Um, 
Uh, the current house, the current house uh, has a garage <laughs> with one main floor and then a stair to the lower floor and a stair to an upper floor of bedrooms. Uh, what we're planning on doing is to demolish the existing garage and put an addition here that includes a garage, a den, and an upper office on the second floor. And I will show you that quickly. Um, <clears throat> so we do have a new garage here, uh, a den in the back uh, that opens up with lots of windows to the backyard. The clients have a beautiful pool here and some nice plantings along the back pro property line here. Um, it matches the existing windows along the back of the house as well. So quite a nice space over here. Uh, there is a stair that goes upstairs to a nice office space uh, with a terrace um, that the clients uh, asked for uh, to spend some time outside on, a, on this upper terrace uh, overlooking the park across the street. Um, <clears throat> the elevations, you can see the elevations here uh, of the existing house. We are gonna de demolish the existing garage here um, and add this uh, modern uh, addition to the house. <clears throat> Uh, there's some setbacks and different um, proportional uh, considerations that were taken uh, to create the form of this house. And um, <clears throat> you could see the material choices that we made were uh, using EPA siding and hardy board or hardy panel um, clappered siding on the existing house uh, and removing the existing brick facade on this portion of the house um, and using a, a stucco finish and painting it. Um, <clears throat> the existing windows on the addition will be uh, uh, Marvin windows uh, and they're going to be a, a dark uh, bronze uh, to go closer with the Ipe finish and we're going to tie in some of the old, the existing part of the house with the um, hardy pan panel uh, paneling uh, with some of the uh, soffit conditions uh, on the new addition. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a brand new garage door, obviously, with the new garage. It's going to be a frosted glass panel door with bronze, again, a dark bronze uh, metal uh, trim. It's going to be frosted glass. You won't be able to see through it. Um, and it would be a nice little duck touch of additional glass to this house. Um, there is some landscaping work that we're going to do, uh, some uh, additional tree work, uh, plantings and stuff. Uh, they do have a massive tree in the front of the house here. We're leaving. We are installing a new driveway here. Um, that's going to be a gravel driveway. Um, we're relocating the existing fence just to come a little further down this way. Uh, and we're going to be putting some new plantings along the addition of the house, again, for scale and to also make it nicer looking. Um, <clears throat> that's about it. I mean, the, there's, we have a whole material package of, uh, that we submitted um, that details all the little selections of uh, material for the house. So okay. maybe I have a question. question. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> I thought it was Andrew. Um, could you talk about the materials? I'm, I'm having a little trouble seeing, like, on the, this elevation, mm -hmm. I, what what is tying in. I'm not sure what's a rendering difference and what's different colors and, and what all. I'm a little unclear. Is it? It looks like there's gray siding and then stucco and then brown siding or wood siding. And you mentioned the soffits carrying through, and I'm a little confused. Just could you maybe just clarify what else is going on there? So the existing house, we're going to remove the existing siding on the house. We're going to put new hardy panel um, clappered siding on it. Uh, it's going to be uh, the material is. Well, just it's gray, right? And I gray. It's going to be gray. Um, we are having, there's existing brick that's painted here. It's in rough shape. We're going to remove it and we're going to put stucco on the front of the house right here. It's inset into the house. This is, this portion of the house is recessed by about five feet, um, from the front of this facade, which aligns with the front of the garage facade. This will be paint. This will be a painted stucco, smooth finish. 
this uh, condition it's generally white. I'm sorry. Painted generally white, like red. No, it's gonna be, it's gonna be um, Stonington gray, Benjamin Moore Stonington gray color. Like you know, it. we do like to see that package. We did look at it when we reviewed earlier, but it's nice for you to review it with us again. We enjoy that part. We could do that. Yeah. Um, we used a, a rain screen siding of ePay uh, on the on the house on the addition to the house here. Mm -hmm. The, all the tr all the metal trim pieces and mm -hmm. the metal frames of the house are going to be a dark bronze color. Can you point to those. Sure, it's the maybe expand, maybe increase the size. Yep. Mm. Yeah, just focus on the front elevation. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. okay. Better. Yeah. Okay. So those are bronze. Now, what about on the rest of the house? Is that the only place they're bronze? They're only going to be bronze in the addition, which would be the which also represents the ePay. So it's okay, I thought you had said you were going to soffits. You were going to be tying in uh, the faces. Let me, so let me, yeah, let me finish then. So the hardy hardy board soffit and hardy board fascia panels are going to be night gray as well, to tie into the existing to the the new siding on the existing house. Could you show, show what you mean there? Um, that's part of yeah, right here. They're they're going to be hardy panel. Where are you? I see that. Where is it on the existing house? Yes, this is the, 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 the new. I think you're pointing to show over there. Oh, that's the same gray as the the hardy pine. Just the same color. Mm -hmm. I'm having a little trouble seeing your mouse. Oh. That's all. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know how to change that. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm tech, but I'm not that tech. Uh, so, um, yeah, we're going to be the basically it's the same material, just a di it's the same color, just a different application. This will be the soffits. They read very horizontally uh, as a cap on the right. house. So, so that fascia is the same gray then as the hardy board. Correct. 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 The rail yeah. front is going to be a, a bronze railing with stainless steel cables and an EPA cap or a, a mahogany cap, I think, actually, on this one. Okay. Um, for ease of use. Okay. <clears throat> the uh, the facade. Um, you're saying that they are, I. It, is it very hard to go back to the floor plan just to see the relationship between the? Uh, yeah. Oh, do you have it handy? Yep, I'm gonna zoom out. Okay. Actually, oh. Okay. The plan, no? Yep. Yep. I'm gonna get there. Ah. ah okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Here's the plan. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So it flashes with the rest of the house, mm -hmm. but actually it's quite uh, like seven feet, seven feet, okay, set back. The rest of the, or the stack of piece, right? Portion of it, okay. So all that, all this new stuff, it's, 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 it has its own it's vocabulary. Old. Correct. Yeah, okay. They've, they've an existing garage that I think was sort of lined yeah. up there or else even set back a bit that's been removed. The existing garage is aligned. It comes existed with the existing wall right here. Uh, and it actually in the back. Uh, yeah. Back little, um, but the existing wall is here. So this again will help with some proportion and scale of the uh -huh. Right. Mm. One of the things we need to look at is how it fits in with the neighborhood. Can you speak to that a little bit? Because um, this corner is uh, amidst houses that look quite different than what you're proposing um, and the beach clubs that look quite different as well. Uh, well, I, I can tell you on the, on, the, on the two or three blocks before this house, I passed five different modern houses on the way there. So um, I can tell you that I don't, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get back to the existing. Mm -hmm. So here's the existing, the existing house. This is the house right behind it. It's mm -hmm. 
similar. Can you can you kind of blow this this one up too? It's just very there everything is really tiny. Tiny? Okay. Does that work better, guys? Even smaller. Yeah, okay. getting closer to the existing, right? Is that what you're saying? This is the existing mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus, I just lost. It's, it's gone. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I mean, my whole screen is that picture now. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know, it, it is the house, the house that had the two sister 50 houses, Bill. You know, the one I mean that we reviewed a few years ago, the gray house with the that I'm surprised you didn't include that in your pictures because it's really pr pretty close by I, I, across the street. Do you know the one I mean? I, That's very modern. I included the two across the street um, on Bleecker, uh, the mm -hmm. two literally right across the street. One yeah. of them literally just got doubled in size. And then the two, the houses literally around them. And um, the one, the gray one on the bottom, down on the bottom yeah. second from the right that's the one that's exactly right next door to your yeah and it's, it's this is the same cement board uh, uh paneling as well mm -hmm. um yeah. and a much larger house actually i mean i tend to like the way the house looks i mean and there is athena the one very modern house a caddy cornered across on, on um, Rushmore. But you know the one, I know you're saying the gray house is a lot bigger than the house you're doing right now. Still, this house is yeah. bigger. This one is much bigger than my client's house. Because that is one thing we have found from, you know, the house they're doing now, Athena, the one on Sini, that has ended up looking a lot larger once it got is almost complete than we thought it would be when we approved it. So that mm -hmm. would have been a question that I would have asked you, but knowing that it will be smaller than this. I mean, proportionally, mm -hmm. this is this is much larger than mm -hmm. our, especially with the peaks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think one is like a 2,500 square foot house and one's like a 5,000 square foot mm -hmm. house. Yeah, know. exactly. Uh, I mean, look, I, I don't think it's, I, I think it's the scale and the character of the house, I think still fits within the neighborhood. And like I said, on the way over to this house, I live just down, I live in New Row, just down the street. Uh, on the way down Rushmore Avenue, yeah. there's five modern, like, I, I mean, I, the first time I drove down there. Michael, was, Michael like, we, we all live within like, with blocks yeah. of this house. <laughs> I, that's a good point. I guess that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. I know there are at least three not, that you not passed me. on the way. I don't live there. It does. It, I got to tell you, it. You know, when I when I, you know, you stop because they're modern houses. You know, uh, you, they do catch you, your eye. Um, so they're exciting to see, actually. And it, I, I, this will, I think, add to that and make it even nicer. Yeah. I agree. I like seeing the diversity of having some yeah. modern homes thrown in. And I don't think mm -hmm. we're not talking about like a Frank uh, a, a Frank Gary edition here. We're not. <laughs> we're we're still within a, 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 a more yeah. humanistic modernist uh, mm -hmm. appearance here. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did the other house that uh, yeah, there was. I don't, know, I don't remember right. the location, On. but I think. We talk about another project you had, right? Boston Post Road, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Very yes. similar yes. in in. Uh -huh. style. Um. To right. be honest, it's it's a coincidence. I mean, yes, it's modern and it's the style that our office does. Uh, it just happens to be coincidence. Those are the two projects I'm representing from America. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. Michael Lewis on here from time to time too. He's probably looking. And my colleague Brandon as well. So, <laughs> um, um, yeah, yeah I, I guess if I had one criticism, Michael, if you went back to the elevation, I, I, I would have appreciated maybe, I don't mind it being modern. I mean, that's fine, but it seems like you could a, a better effort might have been made to tie the existing and the new together more. Um, you know, you know, it, it looks like a, it's sort of it looks very much like an addition to the existing house. It doesn't look like you've got one unified house there. Um, mm -hmm. 
and you know that's I don't I don't know that it's a deal breaker, but I would say it would be a criticism I would have anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, any other board comments or questions? Mm. Yeah, my understanding is quite different. The massing is similar, the two big pieces there. I'm looking at it and... It just it bothers me it, that it's very conspicuously in addition, um, you know, that you don't yeah. want to unify. Yeah, uh-huh. Which could have yes. been, I think, yes. definitely handled by, you know, material mm -hmm. and tying it in mm -hmm. more. Um, mm -hmm. But. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally different. But that is, that is true. There is some really large trees and planting in front of the house. And mm -hmm. uh, I got to tell you, you, you don't see this part of the house at all. Uh, I. <laughs> Like I said, we all we all know the house. We all live here. Okay. Sure. I mean, Andrew lives a little yeah. further away, but the rest yeah. of us all walk by yeah. it every day. And the, yeah. So it's I don't you know. Yes. Yeah. I wonder, I mean, I don't know. I'm just um, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent convinced either. I do like um, it, you know, it doesn't need to be you do not need to repeat what the existing, you want to make it a little bit different, but somehow it needs to have some kind of relationship, some, something either. Um, I, I understand the massing of those, the new volume is basically the same. And I, I like that, mm -hmm. but then uh, the facade, the material, the colors, everything is different. So yeah, it's, it's a little hard to, and, and again, I do like modern <laughs> and, um, and I think you know sometimes the, uh, the a modern gesture it it, it is really it, it's very um, positive, and I also uh, I like how the the diversity that uh, Cindy is also talking about uh, in terms of architectural vocabulary, but I, I'm having a little bit of hard time uh, again, and I'm sharing this with you because I'm mm. not sure. What, what if the what if the windows were framed? In, in a dark, in the bronze color, how would that be on the existing? Then we'd have to replace all the windows on the existing part of the uh, I'm a, a really part. expensive, yeah, yeah. Given that, given, I mean, given that you're replacing all the, the hardy siding on the side, how, how come you went with two different colors? I mean, you, I, I, my sense almost is like, you really like this wood color, but it may be a cost more and they didn't want to spend it on the other house or something. Um, you know, it's... Uh... There was a balance. We did go through a couple different design scenarios where we did bring some of the hardy board onto this part of the house and then and vice versa. We do bring some at the front entry. We are bringing some of the ePay into this area here, into the front entry to help tie it in together. And again, using the same color hardy board should help with that as well. Again, as much as I understand what you're saying and I, I get your the concept, this part of the house is, is behind planting of massive trees and and, a, and lots of into, of planting. Yeah, I, I don't know that I buy the argument that it's it's all okay if you plant ivy on it. You know, it's uh, uh, no, no, it's not, no, no, not ivy. There's <laughs> large shrubs, large trees in front of it. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I know, I know. I, planting ivy on it's an architectural joke. But, um, <laughs> um. Uh, you know, um, I, I, to me, the challenge of it is that the um, the 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 front of the house there is like all glazing. The back of the house is all glazing. Actually, what I think is the most interesting part of the new addition is. The bottom is the proposed northwest elevation, which is in the bottom left, and also the proposed southeast, where there is a little bit more wall, mm -hmm. which kind of matches, which which does tie in with the the rest of the house a little bit more. Yep. But 
that that's i think maybe that's my drawback is that it's like so it, to me it's over glazed and you oh. don't really get a you don't really get that sense of both solid surface and glaze that's my opinion but yeah, well, for a variety of reasons, the flat roofs, the materials, the glazing versus solid, it's, again, the, the general thing is it, it, it just looks like an addition to the house and not a, uh -huh. uh, not a part of the house, which is, you know, in, know. in, in ma initial massing studies, trying to make this existing connection to the house, he, matching the existing roof or trying to make the existing roof work with the house was quite uh -huh. a Quite a challenge, actually. The massing, I think, is sort of the one thing that does work. It does work. It does. But we're trying, yeah. trying to make the connection mm -hmm. quite hard. Yeah. To get up another mm -hmm. two feet of mm -hmm. height to get to the fourteen feet height. Because, yeah, like I said, I think the massing works okay. It's it's more of the, you know, the materials are look like, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I'm having a little hard time, and I, I I don't know what to say. But it's just, uh, um, yeah, I don't want it to look like you know it's something like. I mean, it's totally different to what it's there. So actually, what doesn't you know, it just doesn't belong. I'm trying to to see what. It could be done and maybe, I mean, you could look at it. I'm with you, Yvonne. For me, this is too much yeah. to stand out. I know that there are the two modern houses down the road and then the one on Sini, but to me, this is a different area of the neighborhood um, and one that's surrounded by the beach clubs um, that have a very different aesthetic. Um, so I, this is one I cannot get behind right now with the way it's being presented. And for me, it doesn't bother me that it, it's modern. It's more how it's handled. Uh, I mean, the beach club has part of it's modern as well. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm mm -hmm. not afraid about modern. No. I'm not. And in fact, I think the main facade, the proposed Southwest, I like it because I like the, those two volumes and they are similar in shape and proportion. And maybe the one that bothers me the most is the back, but I do understand that, you know, those windows, the new windows are taller and have a little bit different proportion. And those, those are the ones I'm having a little bit harder time dealing with. Uh, but I do understand that you're working with the heights there. I, I do understand it's not simple. That's just moving things up and down, so, but I just had that concern. Mm. Um. All right, let's, let's pause for a moment and see if there's any um, audience mm -hmm. members who have any comments mm -hmm. or questions. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't, but I, I'm sorry, I do see Michael Lewis on here, um, so I'm going to promote him to he panelists. Was looking there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot of people, so it's a little bit. Yeah, I, I did ask for if anybody wanted to speak as part of the application to please sign on uh, initially so we don't have to like hunt you down. Um, so I don't see anyone else uh, with a raised hand. I don't see anyone who wishes to speak. And is Michael Lewis okay. one too? Uh, you'll need to unmute yourself if you. Yes, I will actually. If, uh, do you hear me now? Yep. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah, it's been really interesting. Uh, you know, watching this presentation and seeing the project uh, through your eyes and, and hearing your comments and they're, they all are, uh, uh, they're well considered. Uh, I, I think I just sort of want to speak up a little bit about sort of the thoughts that were going through our head as we were, as we were working on it. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you've seen uh, modern additions that are done in this in the rain screen Ipe material. Um, mm -hmm. It's a it the the rain screen sort of refers to the actual siding just floats a mm -hmm. half an off of the sheathing and uh, and what it does is it allows the material to be set up completely flush so it's not a clabbered it's not a ship lap it's a it's mm -hmm. a complete it's a completely flush material that has uh, essentially something that reads like a nickel gap between the boards mm -hmm. and you're probably all familiar with the ipe when but when it's laid up in a vertical way and oiled it it is just a this amazing beautiful wood that reads um it really reads like furniture um, and it's extremely uh, it's extremely uh, rich looking very very provocative and it's very seductive and um, I think the idea that we had mm. was that we were sort of taking this sequence in grays and, and of course it's it reads very much as a natural material the wood uh, we okay. also think that using the, the grays and the dark grays and the hardy plank, when juxtaposed to the wood, it almost reads sort of, even though it's clearly a synthetic painted material, those neutral tones, you know, really complement the natural materials in a way almost that like steel or glass would. Uh, and so what we're seeing is this sort of uh, gray sequence coming across on the front elevation say, uh, from right to left, and then culminating in this uh, wooden mass, mm -hmm. and uh, and so it's not it, it's not uh, it's not consistent. It's a it's a cap on the end of this sequence that comes across, and then but the other thing is that you know as you approach this house, you're almost always a uh, you know approaching sort of from the west side, and. Uh, and you're coming in, it's very much a corner. And, and what the addition does is it's this, what we think, you know, not to use qualifiers, but this beautiful wood mass that's articulated that turns that corner uh, in a really nice way. Um, and, and so it's sort of like a corner element that caps the gray element that's coming across from right to left. And I think that's the concept uh, behind it. And so, well, I, I think all of your comments are sort of, they're kind of appropriate and I think they're, they're well considered, but I, but I think perhaps it's hard to, as we're looking at the drawings and maybe, maybe we could have provided something that illuminates that better. And, and, and now that we're having the conversation that we sort of get that sense, but in doing it, it, it didn't occur to us. In, in pre preparing for the presentation didn't occur to us. But uh, mm -hmm. again, that's yeah. kind of where we're coming from with this thing where it's, a, it's intentional that mm -hmm. this is a, it's a really striking rich um, mm -hmm. component mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, that I wouldn't say it's an ornament, but it's, it, it's, it's very strong. Um, and if we, if we, uh, go the the simpler route where we gray it out like the rest of the house uh, that is a comfortable solution but i think uh it's not as nice you know it's a, it's it's just not as it's just not as striking so um as you look at the elevations it it heightens this idea that oh there's inconsistency as you come across but i think on the side as you're approaching it and you see the corner and you see this wood mass wrapping around and then you see the gray existing house terminating in it, that I think that's an experience that would be really terrific. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to kind of mm -hmm. make that. Mm -hmm. It just seemed sort of more effective like on your, the, your post uh, road house where it was articulated, you know, and it was a different mm -hmm. geometry in between the other thing. In between, yeah. Whereas this that's just has a feeling of like, we stuck it on the end and we really like it and it's too bad the rest of this house is here. Right. Um, I, I still like, again, looking at the elevation, the Northeast, I appreciate the effort of making things the overall height the same, the um, 
uh, that element, uh, horizontal element sort of line up. They, they talk to each other, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I know it, the material is beautiful. It's that rich uh, wood is, is, is beautiful. Yeah, this, I think that the same concern as like um, the, uh, Bill has is the other one, and I we do remember and I, the other project was in between, which is I think it's easier to deal with than when it's at, at the end. Mm -hmm. And but um, I mean, I think it's uh, it's nice. I mean, it's been thought through. It's it's aesthetically pleasing in terms of the, the whole the, the new uh, addition. I like it. I like the way everything plays out. It's just the connection with the existing, but uh, that's my only my only mm -hmm. concern. Mm -hmm. Well, I, mean I, I definitely like it more than I don't like it. And I mm -hmm. would say, yeah. why don't we take yeah. a look at the existing house for a moment? Could we? Mm-hmm. It, it's very lackluster compared to this. And, and oh, yeah. in, my, in my opinion, I think, I, I think this is much more interesting. I mean, the actual, yeah, the photograph of the mm -hmm, actual mm -hmm. house, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> no, it's very interesting. I really think it's, it's nice. And, you know, uh, what we were taking from the existing house, you know, it's it's just it, it has it's, you know, it it's living and breathing ranch and it's it has that low. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and yeah. we're like, great, let's take that low slung horizontality that has such a has such a lateral momentum and, you know, and sweep it across and then culminate with this corner piece. And that's kind of where where we're coming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. technically be a split level actually the uh but, well it is uh, yeah. but but in terms of in just visually you know the that center section is lays long and low it's got a, you know that low mm -hmm. really low pitch yeah. game. Mm -hmm. okay well i well the more i look at it the more i like it i'm in i'm supportive yeah me too me too <laughs> i think it's worth it to to go I, I do like too. Uh, oh, that's great okay. to hear. Okay. We have. I, I still, have, I still think the. <laughs> I still think the side elevation is actually the more more interesting than front elevation. But regardless, I'm supportive. <laughs> well, well, that's what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna drive up to, right? Is the side elevation? <laughs> isn't that what you're gonna see when you're? Yes. It, it, that's oh, the garage is turned. The garage is rotating. Yeah. yeah right. Mm -hmm. It's that yeah, corner. No, but that elevation is very nice. I mean, the, the new addition in itself is very nice, yeah. I think. I, will let, <laughs> I, will, I, th I think we're probably gravitating towards some sort of uh, uh, thought thought here. But let's, uh, why don't we have, or you think we're ready? We could vote on this if we want to have a motion. Yeah, yeah. I motion. I second. OK, let's do this by uh, individual votes, uh, mm -hmm. if we could. Uh, so, um, Let's start with, uh, I don't know uh, who, who's the last one to talk. Yvonne, why not? Yes, I vote yes. Okay, Cindy? I vote yes. Andrew? Yes. Athena? I'm opposed. Okay. And uh, as I said initially, my thought is I didn't know that I thought it was a deal breaker, but I did think that I had wished you had uh, maybe put a little more effort into finding ways to tie it together a little better so that it, at least it looked like it related. It didn't look like a, you know, a foreign object. That notwithstanding, I am not, it, it's still not a deal breaker to me. So I'm not so upset by that, that I would vote against it, but it, let's call it a criticism. And with that, I'll vote for it as well. Um, so that's, uh, four to one then okay great okay great thank you very much we really appreciate mm -hmm. it and we mm -hmm. we take your uh take your observations to heart uh moving forward thank you okay thank you thank you
Okey dok. Alright. Okay. Uh, next up then is um let's see it's 275 Mamaroneck Avenue. Barry, I think you're muted. Good evening. Can you uh, can y'all hear me now? Yes. Yes. My name is Barry Hearn. I'm an architect working with the owner, which is Life Church out of Memphis, Tennessee. I have one of the associate pastors also online with me. If we need him, his name's Adam Bartlett. Uh, what we're our project? See if I can share my screen. Is 275 Mamaroneck Avenue. It was formerly a drugstore and I think a cleaners was in about a third of the building also. I do not know the history of the building, how long they have been out of their business, but Life Church has merged with another church there in Mamaroneck and they are wanting to turn this building into their new church location in the city. Uh, let's see if I can I get believe this. was the prior CVS, was it not? Hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this was the CVS. Like, yeah. This is the building as it is right now. This is our, like I said, drugstore. We are not adding on to the building in any way whatsoever. We're staying within the confines of the existing building lines completely going in the store and we'll be renovating it for a church if y'all approve. Uh, Barry, we're still looking at the survey. I don't know if you're looking at a different drawing. Yeah, yeah, there's no problem. Okay, how do, let's see. You may have to stop sharing and share a different screen if you're in a different program. Okay, let's try this. These are the buildings across the street. Let me see if I can, yeah, there we go. Can y'all see that? No, we just see your uh, face. Uh, sorry, guys. The best thing is to share your desktop, your entire desktop. Then you can move from program to program. Is there a way to do that different than sharing screen? So when you share a screen, it shall give you several options. You can, um, the, usually the first upper left hand corner image is your whole computer and we okay. see everything that you see. Okay, let's try that. I'm sorry, guys. It is getting light. How about that? Yep. Yes. We see okay. a picture. Okay, this is the existing building and the adjoining buildings to the left of it. Mm -hmm. This was the drugstore portion of the building. 
This was the cleaner of the building. This right now is painted brick veneer, which we're going to leave. We're going to infill these doors here with brick veneer. This storefront will pretty much stay like it is. It had a combination of stucco and metal siding above it. The metal siding probably has been on there, I would guess, 25 or 30 years and is fairly well deteriorated. And our goal is to take that off and replace all of this upper two panels with new stucco. And let me see if I can... Try to get the rendering. Yes, this would be what we're going to do on the outside. Both of these panels, these would be stucco. The signage we realize we'll have to come back for approval on that. We're not seeking approval for that right now. I'm sorry, but I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. you, you said it was all going to be stucco, mm -hmm. but it looks like it's still the... the it's not metal. metal. It'll be stuck up. So it won't look like the that. The dark? The dark will be dark, but it will not be metal. It would be stuck. Uh, okay, okay. So it's still going to be those colors. Right. But, but it's a stucco material. Is a, or a, a stucco or ephus or something? Yeah. Yes, sir. The synthetic stucco, which is ephus, which is yeah. usually what we use in this climate. Well, mm. and I have a question. Then it wrap, is it just wrapping? Around. It does not. I don't think you can see it right there. The existing walls, side walls are brick veneer. Right. And That's they, and they the line extend. right there. Okay. And it will stop right there. And we're painting the other three walls of the building. The, the wall that goes down that walkway, the, that brick would be painted? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and it would be painted a darker color? We really haven't talked about that yet, but I think it mm -hmm. would be because it's kind of a red brickish color. Mm -hmm. uh, and this yeah. side over here, there is a mural of some type. I don't know how long it's been there, but all of the three sides have various flaking paint places and places that need repaired. And so all of the three sides would be painted as yeah. part of our improvements. Is I the think that, that, that corner, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Ivan. That, that, that corner is quite important, particularly that there is an alley. We would like to see what it looks like. The alley, exactly. That's really on Yeah, there's a covered too. walkway coming down through. Yes, yes. You can see it right behind the signs right there. Right. And it mm -hmm. will stay. Now, Barry, is that a couple of questions? First of all, the, uh, the windows. Uh, Mm -hmm. the it's our aluminum storefront, and we're going to be replacing the existing aluminum storefront. And will they still be windows, or will they be something uh, more opaque? I don't recall from. The no, they will be windows. Okay. Behind this area in the, here is our lobby okay. of the church building. Okay. So the uh, sanctum is is for the <laughs> right. The sanctuary is on the back of the building. Okay. There's some classrooms being provided for children. This is really kind of the main entrance doors, which is what they are right now. We'll say that. And this will be kind of our secondary entrance over here. Okay. Now, my, the other question I have is if you could go back, do you, or can you easily get back to the drawing of the, the front facade? Uh, let's see. The drawing of the front facade? Yeah. I do not have it readily available. All right, well, that's okay. We can, I can talk to it anyway, but-, uh, but uh, I can pull up the materials. <clears throat> Ma'am? My heck, it's not that you complicated. Up. I just thought it would be easier to see on the elevation, um, but we could do I've it. Got, I've got the front elevation, Barry. I can share it real quick. Okay. Hold on. I'm. It, it's my question. Three people are fighting for that. My question is more <laughs> simple than all this effort merits, but we'll. <laughs> okay. Did I win? Okay, so this drawing uh, here is a little different than the picture. All the this this the yeah. 
You see where yeah. it says the Life Church New York. Those two panels are, as I understand it, I guess, Ephes. Ephes, yes, sir. And then everything, and then all this other pattern is brick. Now this shows, it looks like on the corner, it shows brick coming down to the sidewalk, whereas your rendering seemed to show the Ephes coming down to the sidewalk. Yeah, the, uh, the problem is we haven't been able to get in and do much demolition exploratory work. Uh, and so that's, we were told we needed to get our permit to build before we can do to demolish. The existing metal siding covers that over and we think it's brick veneer there. And that's why we want to leave it there. Mm -hmm. That would be good because if I were to have an issue, I would be concerned about having EFIS on that corner with that alley there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't like it down low either. Mm -hmm. Can you move to the left, uh, get the corner, um, move it to the right, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the joint. There you go, there you go. Right or the oh. No, 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 you were right. <laughs> move it to the right, please. So we see the corner. You're looking here, you wanna see this? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, 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 there you go, okay. Yes, thank you. Now the uh, the elevations, the joints, uh, it's better in terms of the, the 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 doors. They are lining up on top. It, again, it's a better uh, solution, or, or at least it looks better than the photo. So the rendering was done early on. Ah, uh, uh, I so. see. Yeah, but this reflects <laughs> the most accurate. Yeah. This was, okay. like I said, this was done after we were able to get into the building mm -hmm. and do some exploratory work and mm -hmm. verify what is there. Mm -hmm. Old storefront okay. panel you see there, there is actually a door right now mm -hmm. and we are not mm -hmm. leaving the door there. We're just making that storefront glazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, well, it's better. Now, if hypothetically you did your exploratory removal of the metal mm -hmm. paneling and found mm -hmm. out there was not brick veneer there, what would you do? Mm. I would probably, since we're painting the brick veneer, look for a way we could take brick veneer back and paint it all up so it would, right. it would all still match. It's like okay. I said, we don't, we avoid taking EFA synthetic stucco, anything like that down the grade yeah, just that because would, of the durability. Yeah. But right. particularly oh, yeah. on a busy corner yeah. like that, it would yeah. be good in no time flat, and that wouldn't be good for you. Oh, it wouldn't work. No. Right. Did you want to say something, Dennis? Okay. No, not yet. I'm okay. Okay, I, I saw your your, <laughs> phone, your your little phone thing showed up, so I thought mm -hmm. maybe you were trying to talk, come in. Okay. Um, all right. Any other uh, comments then from the uh, the board? Or questions? Well, I I would just would like to know exactly how that transition, the corner, how that's going to be. If it's, it's going to be remain the uh, the brick painted, or how that corner works. You know, transitioning the two materials. Right, I, I feel like we're going to have to see the rendering again after we really know what materials will actually mm -hmm. be used, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are the materials that will be used. It's just right there at the corner because it's covered over with the metal siding right now. And until we can take it off and find out exactly what's there, I have no problem. We could bring it back, but yeah, I, I well, I think what I heard you say is mm -hmm. that you would, if if it is not brick veneer, you would put on brick veneer and paint right. it like the other brick. Correct. Veneer. Okay. Um, yeah. which, if I could, think, if I could clarify, like this whole area here where my cursor is, mm. existing storefront, and we're stitching mm. in brick to tie right. in. Yeah. And there's many places where we're going to have to brick. There's a lot of. Right. If, if I recall, even in this specific corner that we're referring to, there's some um, 
<clears throat> there's some brick work that is in, in poor condition that we're going to have to repair, stitch in new brick, redo the mortar. And we're just going to have to paint really to tie in the whole, yeah. the right. whole front and the side, even the, the brown kind of color paint down the alleyway. Yeah. It, has mm -hmm. the, it has like some flowers and butterflies on it. Now, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure when that was done or how it was done. the elementary, <laughs> local elementary school. So careful ground there. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> yeah. can, I, can I make a point, which yeah. is that the, so you're not getting, you're not seeking approval for the sign, right? Right. But, Correct. but currently it's a graphic that's much bigger. My impression is it's much bigger that's gonna, than it's gonna be allowed. Okay. Right, because the maximum height of the letters is 18 inches in the total sign, right, right, Bill? Yes. Right, so it's yeah, a graphic those are that's- close to 24 inches high right there. Right, so the, so the and then you have the, you have the symbol there and the total height of that can be 30 inches. So, the graphic that we're seeing is much bigger than will be there. And this used to be two stores with graphics above both, right? right. Now you're gonna have a very large area of nothing because the sign is gonna be, well, I don't know what it's gonna look like, but I'm just saying is like one of the most visible things will be, because otherwise it's extremely plain, right? So I was just curious like what, yeah. What, you, what you expect to be there because if the if the if the lettering was smaller, it will be a lot of blank up there. Yeah, you raise a good point. A lot of this is a, it's a sort of a like yeah. a billboard. It, it not in a not in a pejorative sense, but it you know presents the uh, the church you know in a in a in a in a graphic way that is you know and not in conformity with the sign of um, and it's a good point. So what happens to this elevation if, if, uh, if the sign falls within the parameters that are allowed, which is 18 inch letters and a 30 inch sign? I still think it'll work pretty good. It's, you know, I'm not worried about it. It's more in keeping with what was there and we were trying to get in with what was there without disturbing it too much. It's been there so long. Um, if I was able to get back to my photo of it, I don't know, Adam, if you can get yeah, to the I'll photo of the front. Yeah, I, and from a from an owner's perspective on, um, where do I stop share? From, I'll just keep it for, just for a second, but I think that's not a little big from what we want. It's a little in your face, I think. Um, so it's just, again, it's a placeholder. We haven't, we haven't nailed that down yet. I think, I think it'll look, I personally feel like it'll look nice um, as far as the front of this building goes without multiple signs and clean. I'm not worried about adding a bunch to the front of it. I think it's a good, I think uh, it, one of our things. Right, I mean, I wasn't good. really thinking about adding a bunch. I was just curious about it. There'll be a lot of, you know, it's a lot of blank space. So it's going to be white and then dark above though, right? That shows white all the whole Correct. Mm -hmm. Can so you show band, that? So you expect so do you think the sign will be just on the on the light band? Do you know? Let me see if I can. It's on both mm -hmm. bands. Again, here it's a little large. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. I think it's going to be okay. Okay. I mean, I'm yeah. just, I just yeah. want to think I don't about it. mind anything about it other than, as Andrew uh, has pointed out, it, it's the way the uh, Barry has, has rendered this is graphically appealing when it gets to be half as big, you know, mm -hmm. right. you know, might start to look a little like a, a little less graphically interesting. Yeah. And I mean, we can't address that now. I think okay. it's something that we want uh, Barry and, and Bart to, to consider though, that you, you would, as you do this, you probably, before you get too far down the road with everything else that you're doing, you know, mm -hmm. make sure that you can incorporate signage, you know, that 
you know, will will meet your purposes and, and be within the, the, the village's parameter. Okay. No problem on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you may it may affect the proportion you have, for example, between white and dark or something if the sign is a different size. So I, I think you ought to design it with design in mind because I think it's an important element here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Mr. It, Chair, if I if I may, um, I have a, a couple things I'd like to insert. Mm -hmm. So on the on the on your review of signs, right? If the lettering is permitted to go over eighteen, they would have to go in front of the zoning board for that, right. as well as a second sign if they wanted to put another sign in the rear of the building. So. Well, you know, not, Dennis, if I may, you're allowed an accessory sign half the size, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So my, my question to you is, would they have to go, how would they be able to get a variance to go for a larger lettering? Or is there no circumstance where that is permissible? No, there is, there is a, uh, there is, and, and it's happened before because there's been other cases where the facade has been such that, uh, that, that Italian restaurant that didn't last so long, for example, had a little tiny sign and we thought it looked crazy and it needed to be larger. Um, and, oh, the, and the Chipotle I, has two same size signs. That's a good example, the Chipotle. And, mm -hmm. and what happens is that it has to go to zoning and uh, off sometimes zoning, uh, and the, the pork uh, sausage store too, over there around the corner, that's another one. And in that case, for example, the zoning board came and asked me what was the thinking of the, the of, uh, architectural review board. And I said that our thought was that a little sign there looked a little lost on that big blank wall and it needed to be a little bigger to you know, have some proportion to it and, and zoning granted it. But it, but the short answer is it has to go to zoning. Um, we, we so, so really though, I, I do just want to make sure we're careful about what we're reviewing tonight and what the board is reviewing right. tonight because right. they, this applicant has not submitted a signage application that would need to be reviewed by the, the building department and it would need to be discussed and it would need to be determined you know, based on what they're proposing, where it needs to go. So I, I do just like not want to confuse. Sure. And that's a good point. And I wonder, in fact, Bart and Barry, if you wouldn't be better served to have us give you a preliminary reading on this versus to approve it or not approve it, so that you can go back and, and design the whole thing together with your signage, what you want to do and, and come back with a, a more... Uh -huh holistic pattern. Now, I don't know how that works, Dennis, because I know that they need to get some kind of uh, approvals to be able to do the demolition work, and we don't necessarily want to hold that up. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe Dennis. Yeah, this is this, is this applicant's so really like their last stop. They have one more circle back with the planning board um, mm -hmm. coming up, and then, you know, that all of their land use board approvals would be set outside of the signage that we just discussed so so um in talking about the sign and the, and the sizing that's where i was getting after that was getting into what is going on behind um that existing fascia so in, in that i don't think there would be an issue um if they were to come back to the board if if they needed to to get a evaluation of the front of the building or, or sides so we can get them to a point where they can receive a permit from the village and then move forward with, with the demo and opening and do more, more exploratory to find out their fixed, their fixed detail for the front of the building. Okay, if I, so if I understood you, Dennis, are you saying that um, they would be able to, you think they're far enough along with the approvals they have that they could do their exploratory work and come back with a comprehensive front street facade? So if the board, if, if the board feels comfortable on, on 
voting and accepting what they're offering you, excluding the sign, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're 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 under the idea that what they're going to say could be permanent, but there may be changes due to the structure. So if you if you put into the final wording, you approve X, and that's what we expect. But if it gets changed in this direction, you'll have to come back in front of the board. So that would give us time that they would finish with finish with you. They would have some approval from um, the AR. Then they can proceed back to the other board. And in that interim, um, after they proceed, we can issue a building permit. And then they can open up the front of the building, uh, you know, not, not greatly, but just open it up and see what's behind there to make sure that they can do what they propose to you today. Okay, well, I guess I'm, I'm not quite clear because I think I'm hearing that we would be maybe willing to approve it, but not with the sign. Correct. Nothing, nothing regarding the sign at all. Zero on the sign. Um, okay, so we could approve just, everything just except the, the sign. sign. Let me see if I can paraphrase this because to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to change it, but uh, make sure I'm understanding. So you're suggesting we could have vote to approve prove it as, as far as it goes exclusive of the sign, then they could go do what they need to do, get the sign on it, and then come back. And if there's any changes to the facade to incorporate the sign, we could we could I, we, we could vote on that at that time, the, the, the change. Mm. Correct. That Correct. makes sense. That's, that's, that's I think what that makes I mean. good sense. Okay. Did you, did you as, uh, before I ask the rest of the board how they feel, Barry, Bart, did you understand that? I think that's what we were asking for originally because <laughs> our understanding was that we had the sign on there. We show the sign on there so we can show power requirements when we start doing our renovation work. We always knew we would have to get sign approval and resubmit it. Okay, so the only twist is that <clears throat> If to incorporate the sign, you may need to change some other elements of the front facade, right. you know, and if, if so, when you come back with the sign, you'll come back with that too. And, and Yeah, we'd have to come back before y'all if we changed anything like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm. All right, that sounds good. Adam, do you have any problem with that? No, that that's what I expected. So sounds good mm -hmm. to me. Okay, I've been calling you Bart the whole time. Your name's Adam Bart. He looks like a Bart. <laughs> I have two great friends that call me Bart. <laughs> okay. I can I see, roll. I see there's a question from the public okay. in the chat room. It's not really related to the uh, bar, though. But. Okay, I will allow Lauren Perone Jones to speak. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi, I've uh, grown up here. I'm a Maronic. I've lived here for close to 40 years my whole life and my father grew up here. Um, my main concern is that this is the main thoroughfare of the avenue. It's the very heart of the business district. Um, and, you know, you know the, the fact that it's a church aside, but, you know, like the church part will make it so that it is kind of a, a dead space on the avenue to begin with. Um, and I, this wall that they're creating instead of, you know, where it used to be the dry cleaner, it's now just this, I mean, talk about a lot of nothing. You were saying that if the, the sign is smaller and, you know, th there'd be a lot of nothing, that wall is a huge dead space, a lot of nothing now. And I just think it's a, it's kind of a sore with everything else. You have all these beautiful storefronts and, and trees and whatnot going on on the avenue and there, oh, there's this blank wall space. And I just, I don't think it is indicative of the business district. And, you know, I spent a lot of times, I, I majored in a growth and structure of cities um, at Bryn Mawr College. And one thing I learned is having these walls and these dead spaces are not good and conducive to business um, districts. So that's one of my concerns. And I just wonder if there's a way to continue the look of the windows without them actually being windows, some kind of you know, like false windows or something, because I just feel like it's a very dead space right there on top of it being already a dead space. So that's, that's my concern. Okay, good comment. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I don't know that I have a, I don't know how to address it. I guess I'll let Bart, Bart, mm -hmm. I, can't, I, can't myself. I don't know yeah. that the board has any authority to, to, to address, I, I don't know if we can. Uh, well, due to our can, layout, I can respond to the comment. Right into. The layout within the building, our bathrooms are in that corner of the building. Okay. And it's where our main gas line comes into the building also right there. And so we've got kind of a utility closet in bathrooms, which mm. this is the reason we were closing the storefront up. I would prefer having it open there too, had it been any way possible. And I think it's a very valid comment. I do appreciate that you have the windows going across most of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, so that's... yeah, I, I mean, aesthetically, I don't know what the board, to what extent, the board can offer solutions, but um, you know the applicant may want to consider um, either mural projects or there's already a bike rack there. Is there potential for um, additional like public use or, or accessibility kind of um, street enhancements, benches, mm -hmm. um, street streetscape enhancements that mm. could um, you know as yeah. sort of just add an aspect of street life and a, and a connection to the, the street life um, facility mm -hmm. in that space that is due to the nature of the yeah. um, building, you know, mm -hmm. somewhat yeah. more blank. Yeah, that's, I agree. That's what, can, can, you, can somebody refresh my memory on what business that is next to that spot that Allison was referring to? It appears to be a bank. It's a oh. Am I oh. the left, it's, it's, it's the restaurant, right? Or is it oh, that's a bank, and then I think Fanucci's is next. Right? Right. There's a bank, a Webster Bank, and then a Frankie and Fanucci pizza Italian restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's a restaurant to the right. Bench right there, isn't that a bench? I love the I love the idea that you had Amber of maybe a, even like a something to I because I, I think it's a valid. That's a valid comment to break up the break yeah. up the there's, space with there's a bench. A bench. Or, oh, mm -hmm. there's a bench there. Yeah. Well, you know what would be really nice, in my opinion, would be, and I don't know if this would be <clears throat> would be like an exterior uh like greenery, like uh yeah. landscape in that area. Yeah, I was just gonna say plantings, maybe a, plant, a planter or something. I don't know if you can do that either, but something like it's that. It's a city sidewalk. Nice. For sure, yeah. right there. Village sidewalk, I think, is key to remember. It's a village, not a city. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just think it's a it's a it's a key differentiator. That's all. Oh, uh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would imagine you would be able to work with the village on that, getting a tree planted. I don't think they're opposed to trees. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, inject I mean, a little a great life. Comment. I mean, I kind of don't know what you do about it. Um, mm -hmm. The existing the existing building, you know, we shifted that storefront entrance, not I don't know what direction that is, the south or, um, you know, it, it wasn't that this far. direction. It went, the other entrance to the retail was right in here. Yeah, it was, it's, we didn't move it much, but it does it, create more of a consistent, but I do think we can do something to break break it up mm -hmm. right there. and if we could add mm -hmm. landscape mm -hmm. right there, i think that would be ideal mm -hmm. yeah that would be nice agreed love the idea would of we need to talk to amber about trying to do that um i i i would say that perhaps this is a recommendation from the the board we would need to really confirm with like the the village um council to determine what in terms of you know whether in in the approval there would be something that could be written in to say you know we approve and and we discussed um a potential uh you know landscaping or streets streetscape enhancement um to alleviate the the sort of the um, breakup of the, the continuity of the block. Um, 
and to be in, in keeping with the more commercial aspect and the activity of the street. Um, I would, I would just, my, my guess is that that would be a, a consideration for the board to um, express in their, in their decision. Um, and that's something that in terms of, in terms of permitting or in terms of options or what you can do, we can certainly discuss after that okay. meeting. And it, since you are going back for signage, perhaps that's something um, that you might want to either package or, or ap apply to do at that later date. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly something that can be done. For example, if you, the, the city MD, for example, has uh, planters that kind of went batting around a bit. I assume it's planning that, that we would express our, uh, the planning board would be the one we would express our thoughts to. Yeah, that makes sense. And, it, and if there's a, a letter or um, something yeah. that you would like to uh, okay. provide to the planning board. Um, yeah, I think that we can do that. They're scheduled, this application is scheduled to go before on the 26th, just about, we're anticipating that. Um, so we can, that can be discussed. Is it going to planning? I'm sorry? Where is it going on the 26th? But to, um, it is anticipated, the agenda has not yet been published, but it is anticipated to go before the planning board on the 26th. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's, let's get a letter. I'll get a letter to them. Um, um, maybe uh, you guys can help me with uh, getting that done and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get that to them, suggesting that there be planting. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Um, I see there's a couple of uh, questions in the chat here in the, in the Q&A. One about parking. Um, mm. Parking is, is not our purview. That, that would be for planning as well. Um, whoever asked that question. Mm -hmm. Right, the parking one. requirements have been met for this project. Yeah. And the other uh, question I don't understand, it just says green wall community notice board, maybe electronic. I'm, that might I, think have that was a, I think that was, I think Emily and Phil, that name, I think is that's who made the comment about that blank space. Oh, okay. And maybe, and maybe that was the uh, right. Yeah, that was yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. right. Okay, thank you. I got it right. Yep, okay, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Adam, got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good then. Okay, um, are there any other uh, questions or comments from the board? Yeah, I still I still think it looks a little too warehousey, and I'm not. I, I I think it the facade, particularly that left side, needs more articulation to make it work with the community. But. Okay. Any. All right, um, any other comments? How about from, any more from the audience, Amber? I do not see anyone who wishes to speak. Okay, I guess to move on then, I guess we will we'll have a, maybe a motion to vote, but let's be clear what we're voting on. We're voting mm -hmm. on this elevation um, and not the, all the elevations, this, this package mm -hmm. here exclusive of the signage, uh, which is to be addressed at a, a future meeting. And that's, that's excluded. And we will be recommending to the planning board uh, that they encourage there to be some uh, landscaping they encourage and permit there to be some landscaping okay. to or other treatment to uh, alleviate the uh, the blank wall on the on the street. Is that uh, it's kind of work to make it to make it more neighborly and village like, yeah. right? Anyway, so that's the nature of that's not yeah. very succinct, but is that clear enough that we could vote on that? And if I so, so. motion, or if it's not clear, if somebody could. Clarify. <laughs> I motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody? Anybody want to put themselves out for a second? <laughs> this is a motion to vote. You know, not to, not a motion to approve. 
Well, I'll motion to, I mean, I'll second to vote. Very good. Okay, so now let's, 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 let's again do a voice vote. Um, Andrew, since you're on, do you want to vote first? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed. Okay, and let's then move to um, Athena. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining, okay. And let's go to Cindy. I know, I feel like I'm abstaining also. So maybe we shouldn't be voting. What well, we <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I, abstaining is, is a little, um, normally you abstain if you, you know, have a conflict of interest or something, it's a little. All right. You know, whatever reasons you have for not voting or your business, I suppose. But anyway, so you, you abstain and that Yvonne? Well, I'm going to say that maybe no. Uh, we would like to see, you know, there are a lot of concerns there, and maybe we need to look at the whole uh, project, the facade, the signage, uh, what's going on with that possibly area that could be developed for the neighbor, um, some hardscape or whatever, which I think that was a good idea. So yeah, I don't feel comfortable voting yes for something that is not very clear. I don't see the full um, scope. So yeah, I'm saying no. Okay, um, I, I, would, I would vote okay. I'm okay with the direction they're going and you know, feel that they're, they're trying to do the right thing uh, you know, under the circumstances and you know, that it, it can be made to work. So I would, I would be voting for it, um, but that still is one for um, two against and two abstentions. So that, that won't carry it. Um, so that said that I guess, uh, Barry, your bill, the thought is that it needs to be something that well, you've, you've heard everybody's comments. Yeah, I've heard the comments. And, and We've we, heard the comments. That's not okay. a problem. Okay. Now, the, the question I guess I have is, is what uh, now, I, I, what do we, do we still write this letter to the planning board? Um, mm -hmm. And um, I'll ask uh, Amber about uh, what, you know, what do you think there? Um, well, I, I, I mean, I do think that if that is a recommendation that the Board of Architectural Review has for the planning board, you should do so. Um, I do think you, you might want to be clear um, in giving guidance to the applicant as to what you'd like to see aesthetically, because this is, you know, the, the all of the objections, I just want to remind everyone that these are the um, visual and aesthetic uh, composition, not anything to do with parking or use or any of the other um, uh -huh. you know, aspects yeah. of the project. So, right. um, And I think the general, uh, the view mm -hmm. of it is, uh, well, as Andrew said, it, he thought it looked too warehousey. Uh, mm -hmm. Other people expressed concern yeah. about the blankness of the, of the wall and the, the, uh, lack, the, the detraction of life from the street in that area. So it sounds like you're looking for something to integrate better into the existing um, look of and and fabric of the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a little hard for me to articulate it because I I was the one that was sort of generally okay with it, but um, hopefully it's it's uh, clear enough from from those comments for you, Barry. Um, <clears throat> can I? I'd like to just share a couple thoughts real quick. Sure. I think it's clear enough as far as the blank section of wall that we've probably added six feet of continuous brick to versus not. So that that's a deal. I understand that. Um, we will work to break that up. Is that, you know, we're not changing anything architecturally. Um, so do we need to, sh do we need to show landscape there? Would there like to, would do, does the board, would the board like to see something besides brick right there? I'd rather not because there's already a bunch of existing brick and we're just trying to stitch in what's existing um, to match. And also I would like to add that the, the overall front facade of what we're 
proposing besides changing out the um, the aluminum siding, which is in poor condition, is extremely similar to what's there now. And this building, as far as making it integrate better with the surrounding areas, um, this building it stands out a little bit amongst the rest of the storefronts along uh, Merrimack Avenue South, if I'm not mistaken. So I think that needs to be under consideration. <clears throat> I think I think it's one of the better looking buildings along the village. Personally, I think it's a we're really excited about you know this project and the building. So I just want to I just want to make sure we understand because I, I we are more than happy to come back and would love to come back before the board. Uh, just want to make sure that we do everything that we can, you know, this next go around. So I'm just I saying. Think, I think you raise a good point that certainly the uh, existing what's there now is not very attractive. But uh, but again, I'm, I I was sort of OK with the direction. So I'm going to ask if, uh, you know, Andrew or Yvonne uh, could could better articulate for him what you'd like to see happen there. Yeah. I just don't want to. Can y'all see the can y'all see the picture of now yeah existing yeah. building yeah we can no we see no the no, no no we're the rendering is up right but the, you know that's not to say that the existing building was a was a dream boat either right so yeah. so no, we're, I mean, we're moving forward guidance you know um, right, we're moving forward so i just think that um right i always thought it was um you know it's, i guess can you see it now yeah i do yes all right, are we looking for something like this to break it down and scale as we come forward? Well, my right, so my feeling is when you look down the avenue as a whole, right, it is broken up. Um, there's new beats of interest with every 25 feet. Um, there's most of the buildings have a natural you know, an older brick finish. Um, this was the one building that didn't never, never had any acquaintance to it. <laughs> I mean, I understand that some of the buildings are not the most beautiful, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seems, it just seems like with the big flat facade and the lettering's not going to be very big. And then you're now you're going to have on the left a blank wall, that there could be some way of breaking that up a little more so that we have beats along that that's mm -hmm. a little different mm -hmm. that, that, that's just my like, take mm -hmm. try to break it down into scale like that right these two right here yeah i mean that's just those two if you keep going down though right each each store is only one is only like 20 feet wide 25 feet wide so, right you know maybe, that's maybe, my opinion i'm just saying i'll just, I'll just throw something well, out maybe and, and I'm, again i'm trying to speak for others in a sense but maybe a Andrew, what would you think of something like if they could set back a portion of the uh, the facade to articulate it? Like, in other words, that instead of it all being flush on the front and the lower level, it, it kind of went back like there by the bathrooms or something so that it receded a, you know, a foot or something just to, to break it up a little bit and not mm -hmm. one big flat surface. Yeah, I think that what the, when you look at this elevation, it doesn't help that big, huge white uh, band there. And uh, a, a little bit of articulation, I think it would help. That, that's a good suggestion, uh, Bill. Maybe some, okay. some recess, some manipulation of the different materials, kind of break it. I mean, again, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but uh, uh, if you need some guidance, I think that's the way to go. Um, break it a little bit in a way that uh, it gets better articulated and relates better to the rest of the, this, the, the feeling of the, the rest of the block. Well, I don't know, Adam, was that helpful or? Yeah, I just didn't, I just didn't want to come back with basically yeah. a, a little bit more polished rendering and a couple mm. of couple of sketch trees in front of an area and say, hey, we made a change. Are you ready to vote now? So I yeah, so that's I, what I was looking for too. I, I just I was just trying to get a little little more help since I you know you I, may you, you may want to consider if you're going to be doing some repairing brickwork also maybe just adding contrasting brick or something like that just to break that up too. But you know I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just thinking that it's too warehousey. Mm -hmm. Also, can't help but notice there's a very attractive tree in this picture. 
Well, the tree's very nice. <laughs> Which in front be. of the wall that we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, but still, but when you're on the street, you're not, you know what I'm saying? It's I, like I know, I feel the people on the sidewalk too. Just, yeah. just, is there y'all may not know the answer, Amber, you may can help me. Is there any way we part of our problem is we really do not know what's behind all of this. And this, the village will not let us get in and do any demolition work. They said until you had a building permit, which we cannot get without all the board's approval. I see. Um, if, if that I might be a yeah building department. Yes. Yeah. So this is this is Dennis Drogan again. So as I was saying before, um, you know, if the board does not vote on what what they see on the facade today, I don't feel that that would hold the building department back in issuing a building permit. So then therefore that would give you time to explore and see what's behind the existing facade and come back to BAR with a firm idea of what you're gonna be doing for the front. So that would be the building permit from the, the shell of the building in the front back and you'd be able to do whatever you need to do. And okay. the front of the building would be exploratory. That's, that's what I was getting at when, when I interrupted before. Um, so I, I think just, you know, as, as the way everything is going, um, I, coming back to the BAR is, is going to happen. Um, so you mentioned writing a letter to the other board saying that, you know, uh, to the planning board, they will be returning when there is the exploratory work is done and they have a general direction that, or, or an exact plan on what they're doing with the front. And at that time, then that green space, the wall, the setback, whatever um, Life Church designs and comes up with um, can go in front of the board. And at that time, I think uh, you'd be more than ready to vote. Um, but moving forward from here, I think, you know, let's, let's proceed to planning and, and finish the, the route of the boards and then after you've done that exploratory work and uh, the building permit has been issued to you, then circle back and go back to BAR. Um, and, and that's that's where I stand. So I think moving forward to planning is at this point is the direction we go in. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, we don't want them to get in a catch twenty two where they can't uh, tell. Uh, what you know what? Can I? Can I use an example? Um, Phillips Park Road, for instance, right? They, okay. they went through the boards, they they finished everything, and then they changed the external look of the building. Oh, they had so to come back in front of BAR again for those changes. Yeah. You know, the brick to stucco. So similar to that, um, but this in a, in a very direct way. So we know they're, they're not ready because of circumstances, of the unknown behind there. Um, the, the only so thing that's different there, Dennis, is that they did have approval and then they changed it. So this is. Um, you know. Yes, yes. But in this case, you you wouldn't be given many approvals. So now it's 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 being very direct and open and it benefits the board and uh, everyone, the building department and, and the uh, and life church. So they know they have to come back to the board and we'll treat that as the, the first time and they have time to uh, come up with potential different renderings of what they choose to do to the front facade uh, and or sides for that matter. Okay, um, that said, we already voted though. Well, that, so then that's... the... Right, that doesn't impact our vote, right? I mean, they can just go ahead and do that with the building department. It, yes, but with with a letter. Um, I'm yeah, yeah, letter yeah. Letter. I'll, I'll, I'll write a letter. I'll, I'll write a letter. Just so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't yeah. stonewall them. It can keep moving forward. Yeah. Okay. All right. And. I got one more comment. I'm sorry to bog down the agenda, um, but there were a couple of uh, abstaining votes and I understand you have the right to do that, which is no problem. But if there's anything that we can do to give you the, I mean, give you the 
what if there's something we did or some for some reason that you didn't vote uh, i would love to i would love I, to know that i, I would i didn't okay. vote because i i felt like there was insufficient information for me to move forward on and you know and this is what dennis is saying when you come back with everything and i i think when we see the proper renderings it'll make all the difference great and thank you i'm sorry athena no mine was exact exactly the same thank you i just want to make sure there was nothing that we've said or done that made you no, want to no 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 absolutely not so it's, it's just wanting more information to be able to vote yes okay thank you Hey, Bill, just a heads up. I've got a hop. I saw your chat. Yes, <laughs> Athena, I understand. You have Thanks. Athena has best, uh, it's best all our bedtimes, but I, I suppose <laughs> you have other people's bedtimes to deal with. So, yeah. well, okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. And we'll carry on with this smaller board. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. We Thanks, look guys. forward to seeing you, you back again. You know, have, yep. And appreciate you're trying to, to do the right thing. It's, uh, yes. It's a, it's a tough property to work with. Sure. Thank <laughs> you. Not a problem. Thank you so much. Okay. So next up is, uh, well, first I'll mention to the remaining two applicants that the board is, is now uh, four of us here and you need uh, still, um, a clear majority to pass. So you would still need three of us to vote in favor. Uh, if you don't like the odds, you're certainly welcome to come back at another meeting uh, without prejudice, um, or you can uh, proceed, but just wanted to, to clarify that for you. Um, so that said, the next uh, application is 530 Oakhurst Road. Uh, you need to unmute yourself to speak. Uh, I, I'm not the applicant. Uh, I, I, I just uh, let you know that I, I don't think you should be hearing this application at all. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. We we will be taking public testimony at a, a later moment in time. So so you will be okay. asked to provide your comments yeah. later. Hey, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Gregory Lewis. I'm an architect, uh, 31 years. I wish I was 31 years old, but 31 years as an architect. And um, does anyone need to take a break? Or are you guys good? We're good. <laughs> Keep moving. Good. I'm here for a, a new house proposal at 530 Oakhurst. And I'd like to share my screen and walk you through the project. Mm hmm Can you see my screen? Yep. Great. Yes. So we're at 530 Oakers, which is in Shore Acres, uh, down on Oakers, closer to the water here. And we're proposing a 5,067 5, square foot house. Uh, the actual maximum for the area and for this lot is 5,263 square feet. And we meet all the zoning uh, setbacks and lot coverage. And I'll show you that through the site plan. Here's the existing house, which will be removed. These are some shots of the neighboring pictures. Please let me know if I'm going too fast or if you need to zoom in on anything. Could you, could you just maybe uh, show the the area the, the map of where we are just to locate us relative to these? Yeah, other yeah I've got that. I've got that coming up. Sure. Uh, okay. So let me just zoom in a little bit here. Okay. 
So here's the aerial. Um, Oakhurst is here, and the house is near the end of Oakhurst here. This is a, a location map with the adjacent properties. Uh, then we've got another one here, zooming in on the adjacent properties. This is the property site 530, this is 544, 520 to the left. Another shot of neighboring properties. That, that one that you first showed though, that's the, that's the new, it has the footprint of the new house. This is the footprint of the new house, correct. Right. Yeah. Here's the footprint of the old house, actually. Current house, the existing yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. Could you just for one, just go back one second, if if you, if you sure. The, the the top one again. Let me the. Okay, so it's actually that 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 one there. So. Okay, now slowly go down to the other. <laughs> sure. All right. Stop. Okay. Okay. So you're. Uh, Looks like you're getting further from the house on the left and closer to the house on the right. Yes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So I'll walk you through. This is just a demo plan. We're going to move the existing house, sidewalks, and driveway. The proposed, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. So we've got a very unique site and that it's very long. It's almost a double lot. And um, you'll see as I carry through the design, we tried to incorporate that concept into the house design. We're also proposing a pool with a patio in the back here. Uh, Site-wise, we've got the garage on the right with a driveway here, extra parking spot on the right, a rear mud, uh, mud room entry here, sidewalk to the front, sidewalk to the street, uh, two planters and some steps up to the house here. This is a landscape plan, which I'll come back to. So floor plan wise, we have a very traditional house. Entry here in the center, stair at the middle, large living room to the left, a traditional sunroom off the living room here, fireplace here. To the right is a kitchen, great room in the back, dining room in the center and a mudroom here with a garage to the right. There's a raised patio here, back stoop, stepping down to the pool, pool and the pool patio here. We're proposing the AC units in the back, generator in the back, and a buried propane tank in the back of the house as well. Here's a lighting plan, which you come back to if you have any questions. Second floor plan, again, is very uh, centralized stair, master bathroom, we have an, uh, we call it a relax room or yoga room off the master bedroom, four bedrooms and um, two baths on this side of the house. And then you're seeing the roof line here. Again, lighting plans here, roof plan here. This is the proposed front elevation. I've got some renderings too, I'll be showing you all, but I'll go over this real quickly. So we've got a very, um, uh, excuse me, we've got a uh, mix of materials, kind of traditional to the area, stucco, wood siding, asphalt shingles, metal roof here. And then you'll see this is the rear elevation of the house. Looks like you have some brick as well. Um, no, that's the siding. That's the cedar shake siding, but- No, no uh, on the front by the door. Uh, they're proposing stone, but cut in a, um, a brick pattern. Right here, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then lighting planters here. And then continuing on, this is the left side and the right side. But I'd like to jump to the rending so I could show you more of the characteristics okay. of the house. So what we're proposing here is a stone entry. Uh, planters here, steps to the front. Uh, large windows across the facades. It's very um, refined and sim simple design. Um, we take the actually, there's a four inch step back here on the upper floor and the floor line is actually here, but we're extending up the stucco facade to the sill of the windows. That becomes a belt line around the entire house here. On the left was that sunroom, the upper uh, room off the master bedroom, the master suite here, 
Closing the um, cedar shakes here, the pre-finished pre cedar shakes, metal roof here. And then um, we're strategically placing the stone to signify entry here. And I'll show you at the back door as well. The light fixtures are designed so that when the, it glows, it'll cast, cast light up and down on the stone. This is the back elevation. Another unique thing we're trying to do here is create, you know, back, again, tying back into the site. Uh, it's a very linear design. So we have a linear facade. We have a linear roof. Uh, we're doing a three foot overhang here, which pretty much isn't done anymore. Everything, everything seems to be one foot or, or nothing. Um, so we're trying to play up the whole horizontality and the li linear part of the site. Mm -hmm. This is the back pull shot. This is a straight on for the front. And then this is a view to the driveway and to the front of the house. So um, I've got a sample of the finishes. So we're looking at the metal roofing at the can entry canopy with uh, musket gray finish. On the siding, we're looking at um, Maybach tiles that are pre-finished and stained in the gray. The stone veneer, the color is here, but we'd like to lay it up in a large brick pattern. The asphalt shingle roofing, the white stucco, and this is a proposed wall sconce at the front. Let me minimize this. So um, at that, I'd like to where, open up. Where, where's the metal? Uh, here over the canopy, entry canopy. So this, okay, and on the on the elevation, that looked like a pediment, but in fact, here it looks like it slopes back. It's a hip, yeah. It's, everything's a hip on this house. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. My firm, I mean, we've done a lot of different projects in Amerinic, and every one we bring is different. I, I think that complements the Shore Acres neighborhood in that you have a wide variety of styles. We wanted to pick up the stucco from the neighborhood, the shingles, uh, but I just didn't want to do another farmhouse. So I hope I hope that your group would embrace uh, our design. We, we tried for a simple linear design. Um, that's it. Any questions? Is there any recess at the entrance or do you have the steps? Yeah, it's recessed uh, about two feet in here. I go back to the, uh, I go back. Not to the much, so there's not much of a landing space, right? Say again. No. Oh, uh, yeah. there's not only two feet it's the okay. no no it's the rendering uh for sure ah. but it, it is let me go back ah. to, yeah, that's what i thought back. no it's, yeah. a, it's it, a good it question looks, yeah and we have a, we're gonna get a strong shadow there yeah uh -huh. so yeah here you I see, know this. that's the roof plan but here's the, ah, okay here's the landing ah, that's better i yeah. think it's a rendering yeah it's the rendering. we that's want better. it to express you know more classic design simple balanced design mm -hmm. We just mm -hmm. want to express the stone on these plants yeah, yeah, yeah. just to soften yeah. up the entry. Stone steps down. Um, we initially had the house much higher out of the ground. We pushed it down into the mm -hmm. earth. And then we thought with the long overhangs and the yes. what we're trying to do with this stucco, bringing it actually to this line, you get this, you get a base, then you get a band, and then you get to the linear lines of the, yeah. of the house. Yeah, those roof overhangs are really nice, very friendly, right? Time. We know it's so it's so funny because codes are written and they all say two foot overhang maximum. But if you set the house back another foot, you can have a three foot overhang. Uh, <laughs> and we had a big enough site. We have a big enough site yeah. that we were able to take advantage of that. So no, I think mm -hmm. it's going to be very distinct, refined. You know, we mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time on color and elevation and character. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, hoping that we can get your approval. Kind of uh, Italian eight, a lot of yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, you you say it's a stucco, right? No, what do you say the the white material? Yeah, the white the or, white stucco. I these are yeah. these are just reveals. Uh, we're yeah. looking at a stucco band here. It's a bit, be about an inch out from that, and then the actual siding here is four inches back. Yeah. So but is that the? Oh no, I'm sorry. Is that so, the stucco? Is that the ethis or not? Or not? No, no, real stucco. No. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've learned to ask that. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then with, with the overhang, it's uh, we're just looking for a black gutter just to create a crisp line at the top. And mm -hmm. again, just simple mm -hmm. refined. It yeah. still has historical overtones, but mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of yeah. a cleaner, cleaner modern version of a historic, historic house. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other board comments or questions? Andrew, Cindy? I'm not. I'm I'm not in love, but to me to me it's a little bank looking, but well not like contemporary banks, but like old banks. I don't know. It's just to me like it's very symmet it seems very symmetric and okay. kind of in your face, but um Peggy, you're not up. And, and I I, I, I wouldn't really have I wouldn't really have said the planners on either side really softened it that much to me because it's all still very, very mm -hmm. regimented, like that whole stone. Yeah. The round of the front door, I, I find kind of, yeah. kind of. Um, I, I I like it. I like the it's you know, but I like Palladio, so you know there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it has a lot of classic and uh, yeah, from the right as well. I mean the the the, the top portion of it at least. So. Yeah. I like the overall feel of it. I do, but it does seem. Like Andrew says, it's a little bit corporate looking. Huh. And I'm trying to wrap my head around all of the different finishes that are yeah. happening. Though so I see why they would, because it breaks it up a little bit at the same time. So yeah. it's funny. It doesn't look corporate to me. It looks like, a, look like something you see around Lake Cuomo or something. But um, mm. Mm. Well, I, I wouldn't doubt that. I'm just thinking about where it sits in the other houses. Mm. Yeah. And it's got a very long, a very long facade. All right, well, let's do that. Let's take a look at we see the, the other uh, houses down the street yeah. again. Could I'd we, like uh, to see no, but before, yeah. before you do that, can we go down? I see there are some extra views of it or not. Yeah, we have different views here. Ah, OK. I also, uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, we did see it. Yeah. The pool. Okay, the pool, and then the, uh, well, we did see them. Yeah, the front facade. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so why don't you show us the pictures down the street again? You want to do uh, Google images? You want to use my pictures? No, your pictures are fine, yeah. I think. As long as they're a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> The neighboring houses, right? Right, okay. right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's five thirty to the left. Can maybe, we zoom maybe in a little? Zoom in for uh, yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> so you have a mix of colonial and Tudor on the house on the street. Uh huh. Uh huh. So that's really why the stucco felt like the right material for the area. Right. And then we also have some wood siding here. So I was picking that, mm -hmm. those two elements and trying to utilize those. Mm -hmm. Can I see the existing house? Can you sure. zoom up to that? Yep. It, it's right here, right? Okay. All right. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I don't know. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm let's, okay with it. Yeah. yeah same. I'm okay. Let's, let's, let's see what the, the I, there's at least at least one audience member right. who has a a question or comment. So Amber, what, what do we got from the audience here? So we do have several people who wish to speak. I'll be taking them in order of appearance. Um, if you wish to speak, please be sure to click the raise hand feature so that you can be promoted to do so. Please also introduce yourself for the record.
Can we get their address too? Um, so, so the first person, uh, uh, M.G. Goldberg, has been promoted to speak. Um, you are unmuted. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you for, for your service. We've been uh, listening for, for quite some time. I know it's getting late. Um, I think we have, we have several objections. First, I should note that Oakhurst has probably about 20 houses on it. Um, you probably have about 15 of the 20 people on Oakhurst on this call to oppose. Um, and we're all strongly opposed to it. And we're strong, this may be a beautiful house on four acres in Bedford or in somewhere in Greenwich, but it does not belong even remotely in our neighborhood or on Oakhurst in particular. It looks like no other house on our street. The size is out of proportion. I think this is the in the top 1% of size of houses in our neighborhood. So it's disproportionate. Also, we are all tutors. My house, I live on 618 Oakhurst. I should have introduced myself. I live on 618 Oakhurst. I live four houses down on the same side of the street. Um, I bought my house 20 years ago. I love my neighborhood. I love everything about our house. My house is about 3,000 square feet, and it's one of the bigger houses on the street. Uh, they are all colonials and tutors. This does not fit in in, in scale or appearance at all. Um, and fundamentally, I should say, we have a concern because first of all, the sign went up three days ago. I'm a, I'm a practicing litigator. I've read the town code. The town code says neighbors are supposed to get 20 days notice of the hearing. We had three days notice of the hearing. We have neighbors that are away who wanted to be heard and we didn't have time to marshal evidence to send you photographs of all of the houses. You did not get a chance to see my house in those renderings, but it is a 1933 a brick center hall tutor. And um, we would like you to see all of the houses on our street. In fact, we'd invite you to come to our street to see the houses, to see how actually out of place a 5,000 square foot house would be that's, that's of this magnitude and this appearance. So uh, the other thing is, in addition to not having enough time, three days, which I think violates the code, uh, and, and Stu Sturk can speak to this. He's a law professor, a real property law professor. Uh, and we believe that the uh, calculation of the size of the house is incorrect. And so it shouldn't have passed the building code. So I think this, this discussion is premature because I don't think it should be before okay. the Board uh, of I'll, Architects I'll Review. Mr. Goldberg, if I may, yeah. uh, let's, let's address a couple, those, those couple things first. Uh, sure. Amber? Yes, so first in terms of the signposting, um, the, that is not the interpretation that our consultants have um, determined for the code. Regardless, um, that, is not, that is not, you know, the applicant's fault. That is what the village has determined. Um, so if there are questions about that, that is something that needs to be raised with the village um, in terms of the village's interpretation of, of the code, but it is not you know, um, that the applicant was in any um, non-compliance with how, how we understood the code to read. Just to be clear, the, the code says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Were you through? Um, I, I would just say that, like, I, I am aware of what the code says. Um, that, is, that, that is not how our consultants have interpreted the code because it, it is a little bit unclear. So, um, I, I would I would recommend that um, the applicant consider um, and and that the board consider that there is this um, discrepancy over the interpretation of the code um, and that it's not an, a conversation that we can have here. I, I can't defend it because I'm not. Yeah, another another word, representative, uh, Mr. Goldberg. We we it's village. We not up. It's not up to us to hear it. it um, it's been you know other people have determined that it it is in conformance for them to present it. So it's a different avenue now. As with respect to the area measurement, uh, Dennis is is he still on from the building department? Yes, I am. 
Okay, they're saying that uh, they don't believe it was uh, measured correctly and shouldn't be before us. So, um, has this project gone to the zoning board already? To the applicant. Is that a question to me? Yeah, for so, Gregory. So has has we have a we have a we have a determination from the building department that zoning That's, is not required, planning is not That's required, correct. and the only required board was the architecture review board. Okay, so that that is done by the the building inspector. Um, I'm I'm the assistant. I mean, I have I have one question about the, the front staircase, but uh, if he's made that determination that uh, it just needs to go here, then he's run those calculations to this point to to say that it's it's made it past there. So um, there's nothing with zoning. I have not looked at these plans, um, so I cannot say. But um, given his determination to this point. Um, and the calculations by the the architect on file. Um, that's that's where we stand um, by by that decision and by that determination letter. Okay, so Mr. Goldberg, I just wanted to then point out that it, um, in terms of it being heard, how the process works. So the planning department determined that he met the uh, signage requirements, and that uh, the building department determined that it was uh it didn't need to go to zoning for a variance so any issues you may have with that you know we're, we're not the right forum you know it, that, that comes to us and you know we don't get to decide what we want to hear or not hear uh so you know that's i just wanted to address those points for you um that you might pursue via other avenues if you object. Um, anyway, just to clarify that. Okay, so moving off. Thank, thank you, Dennis and, and Amber. So I will, I will wrap up. I appreciate what you've said. I appreciate you, you hearing from me and from all of the other neighbors who you'll hear from. When I, when I was looking for a house 20 years ago, I looked for about a year and a half. And when I pulled onto Oakhurst Drive, I knew even before I saw my particular house that I was home and it was where I wanted to be. And there was a distinct character to our neighborhood that we all feel very strongly about. And if we had more than three days notice, you would have heard more people uh, raise that concern. But we're we're the, the, this, is, this issue is before you and it's your job, as I understand it, to protect the integrity of our neighborhood, the appearance to make sure that there is some consistency among the houses. I think the, first of all, the, the, the pictures you've seen highlight that, that this isn't similar to any of the houses, but you've missed, there's only 20 houses on the street. I think you've been deprived of the opportunity to see all of the houses on the street, which, have, which would have highlighted how out of place this truly is. So, and, and there, I think there are also people on this call from our neighborhood who are not necessarily just on Oakhurst, who are concerned about the mass of this house and how we all have two or 3,000 square foot houses and that the house, that these, th this neighborhood's not really appropriate for a, for a 5,000 square foot house. This is the biggest or maybe the second biggest house in the neighborhood. It's not on the biggest lot. Um, and uh, I feel very strongly uh, that, that it's not the appropriate house. We're not against development. Um, I understand that this is a business and that there's a builder who's looking to maximize his profit, uh, but I'm just looking for a house that's designed and situated that fits in with the rest of the block. And I feel very strongly that this is not that house. Um, with that, I'll, I'll uh, yield the floor, but I thank you again for listening and for your service. Okay, and thank you for your comments. And uh, Amber, may we uh, then go into the, the next uh, person who wishes to speak? Yes. Please identify yourself for the record. You have to unmute yourself. 
my turn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you say my name. I, we have some feedback. You need to identify yourself for the record. Okay, I, I just want to make sure that you're asking me I didn't hear you say my name, but I was unmuted. So Alyssa Goldberg. Great. Yes. Okay. Um, my name is Alyssa Goldberg. I live at 618 Oakhurst Road. So um, I would like to echo a lot of what Michael said, but most importantly, I think, I, I don't know if you do this, but you should, if you don't, you should come to our street and walk up and down the street because this wouldn't fit at, in at all with our street. And obviously you could, you'll hear hopefully from other people who are on this call or who join the call at seven o'clock. I know we're, it's all getting late. I don't know if people have fallen off, but I know that they were on originally and a lot of the neighbors together because when they saw the plan for this house, it was very upsetting to us. So, you know, as Michael said, I don't know exactly what your purpose is if it's just to make sure that it's to code, well, somebody could build Count Dracula's house on our street. And I certainly hope that that's not what you would be striving for. We asked the realtor to go back to the develop to the owner of the house now and, and create something that's much more in line. I, I don't know how this is in line with what's in, on our street. This is not in line at all with what's on our street. And by the way, we have a huge variety as the, as I guess his name is Gregory, Gregory, Gregory Lewis said, there's a huge amount of diversity. That is true, but it's all within a certain feel. It's nothing 500 square feet. It's either Tudors or Colonials. That's it. This is neither a Tudor nor a Colonial. So let me ask you uh, just a, a general question. How, what would be the feeling about a contemporary house in general? There's not, it's not a contemporary street. I mean, if somebody came in and built a modern like, I don't know, we, there, there's one modern house on the parkway. And if you ask me, it looks ridiculous. I don't even know how, how that got approved to be on the street. It's like a white square block. I mean, I don't live on the parkway, but I walk past that house with frequency when I walk my dog. And every time I walk past it, I think, how did this get house get, get built? Across the street from that house, there's several new houses that are beautiful. There's a brand new house just almost on the backside of this house. Beautiful, beautiful white house. I would say it's with black windows, like nobody raised an eyebrow about that house. So it's not that we're against development. I mean, I personally think the house that's there now is pretty ugly and I, I'd be happy if they ripped it down, but do it in line with, with the feel of the street. Well, I'm just trying to see if the feel of the street is basically objection to you know, modern architecture or contemporary architecture. Or well, well, I mean, like I said, you, you, I don't know if you do this, but do you ever go to, go to the streets that you're looking at? Well, oh, that's certainly, the certainly you're not in your head. Please, please just walk down our street and you tell me if you think this house would fit in at all. It, it would be, a, I'm sure it's a beautiful house. It would not fit in with our streets. It, it, it's twice the size of the house to the left of it. And by the way, there's another house that I'm sure you're familiar with that was just built on Shore Acres Drive. That's also like 500 square feet, five, excuse me, 5,000 square feet with the pool in the backyard. It's, it's a beautiful house. If you ask me, it looks ridiculous, but I love the people that own the house, but, but it, what they built does, it, it dwarfs the houses. All the houses around it look like you know, set so white house and the seven dwarfs are around it. it the, this, the neighborhood hopefully is not gonna become a place where developers keep coming in, knock down what's there and then build the biggest house they possibly can on the land, six feet away from its neighbors and then leave, which is exactly what the person who bought this house is planning to do. He's, he was never, it was always an investment and that's fine. You know, it's a free country, we're capitalists, great. But, you know, they come in, they make money, they leave us feeling like what just happened to our street and then they leave. That's exactly what this person's doing. That's all I have to say. I, 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 I invite you, welcome you to come. You are I'm welcome, I will gladly walk you down the street. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Okay, uh, Amber. Um. I am promoting the next panelist.
Uh, you should probably say who it is because the, the, I noticed okay. she was confused. Well, every, if everyone could please please re rename yourselves um, to your first and last name as Alyssa Goldberg has done, that would make things a little bit easier to identify everyone. Thank you. So we have a Nick Barnhorst. Please identify yourself for the record. You're muted, Mr. Barnhorst. Hi, everyone. Uh, Nick Barnhorst, 520 Oakhurst. I'm next door to the proposed project. Can you hear me OK? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, thanks for thanks for uh, entertaining us here. Um, I'll I'll keep my remarks brief. Um, when you thought this was entertainment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I moved in the neighborhood just last July of, of 2020, and um, we also spent a lot of time looking for a house, uh, kind of throughout Westchester County, and we, we really fell in love with Shore Acres. It's a special neighborhood, um, as I'm sure all of you know. Uh, we loved Oakhurst Road, particularly it, it is a mix of colonials and Tudors. Um, I, do, I don't want to get soppy about it, but it, it is a cute street. Um, and, and I think all the families on here would agree with that. And uh, the houses are, are modest, but uh, decent sized and, and all good looking, frankly. Um, and, and I've never done anything like this before, to be honest with you. Um, but I saw the plans for this and I, I wondered why they wanted to put a Radisson next to our house because that's what it looks like. It looks like a hotel or a motel that's going in on the street. And it really doesn't fit with the character of the house, or sorry, the character of the street or the neighborhood. Um, and I, I just think it would be a terrible idea to add this to the community because it really destroys the character of the street and of the neighborhood. And that's all. All right. Well, okay, thank you. Appreciate the comments. And Amber, another. Okay, we have a Beverly. Please introduce yourself for the record. You will need to unmute yourself to speak. And um, do you want video? Oh, uh, sure. He's coming, he's coming. This, this is actually Mark Sherrod. Hi, I'm Mark Sherrod from 625. <laughs> so some distance away from this Excuse house. Me, I'm not sure that that was clear enough for uh, Barbara to sure. uh, Could you say your name more clearly? There was somebody moving a chair or something. <laughs> Mark Sherrod, 625 the Parkway. Okay, thank you. Um, Shore Acres resident for 35 years. So this is a, unfortunately um, a, a graceless, charmless house um, on a charming and graceful street. And the entrance does really look like the entrance to a hotel or to an apartment building. And it, um, even the house that replacing is a completely charm, charming cottage. And um, it's really unfortunate that this plan was advanced and it should be withdrawn. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, was was Beverly going to speak, or is that? Uh... Oh yes, I'm happy to. I think we got two chances. Okay. Um, I, I'm Beverly Sherrod, and um, as my husband said, we've lived here for over 30 years. The house. I actually, the first thing that shocked me about it is we scrolled very quickly through the drawing of the entire neighborhood, and when I saw the footprint of this house against the footprint of every other house that was included. I don't know what you call that map. Uh, it, it's double the size. 
it's sort of one of those lot line to lot line, particularly with the cool in the back, it takes up the entire amount of space. It doesn't belong in Shore Acres. There are a few houses going in that way on Shore Acres Drive, but basically this is not that sort of neighborhood and it doesn't fit in. It, it's not pretty. It's um, out of keeping with, with the character of the neighborhood and in particular with the character of Oakhurst. I have to agree that Oakhurst just one block long is a particularly quiet, charming, tree-lined street with, even though there's some variety in the architecture, the houses are compatible with one another. And this completely changes the nature of that. Would uh, just, uh, it would, would your primary objection be to the uh, size or to the uh, design aesthetic? Um, my first objection is to the size. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it dwarfs everything around it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't care for the house itself. Um, it certainly is, it's all straight lines and um, blocks. Mm -hmm. And have any softening qualities? Well, I guess what I would uh, I would ask, and I'm sorry you're the one that I'm asking it to right. <laughs> okay. right now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one thing I'm just sort of grappling with is, you know, uh, the zoning permits a you know a five thousand square foot house here, um, and is there a could a, could a, a five thousand square foot house be designed? that would not hurt the character of the town. I mean, is it a zoning issue or is it purely a design issue? I guess would be my question. I have a problem with both of them. I, I didn't know that the zoning allowed something that was that large. Mm -hmm. um, there are Shore Acres Drive is putting up some Atlantic City-like houses, but um, the rest of the neighborhood doesn't tend to fill. It tends to have a lot of green, a lot of trees, a lot of space between the houses. And um, so size is certainly a problem for me, but I don't like the, I, I don't like the hard lines of it either. I don't think that fits with the character of the street or the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. No. I appreciate your answer. I have, I have lots of opinions, so I'm happy okay. to. Very good, thank you so much. Um, so I just want to note, we have seven other speakers. Um, Stuart Sterk, please identify yourself for the record. Hello, thank, thank you again for, uh, for I won't say entertaining us, but for uh, putting up with us during this period. I think the question uh, that you asked, uh, Mr. Vincent, is a very good one. And I, I think my answer to that question is that it's the combination of size and style that's a problem. Uh, although there aren't any other Mediterranean houses in the nearby area, if there were a Mediterranean house that were 3,000 square feet, one might believe it would fit. Um, could there be a 5,000 square foot house that would fit? perhaps if it were in the style of the neighborhood. But what you have here is a very institutionalized looking house um, that is so large that it overwhelms everything else in the neighborhood. It's the only thing you would see. Um, I will say, and I understand the point you were making before that this house is not zoning compliant and it's very easy to figure out why. The, uh, the architect failed to, exclude the, to include the 500 feet of the garage in the calculations. And there is no exclusion for garages in the Mamaroneck Code. I'm not sure how the uh, building inspector missed that, uh, but if the building inspector were to grant a permit, it guaranteed there'll be an appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, that's, I think, just a mistake because the developer said it's a 5,000 square foot house, but actually, as proposed, it's a 5,500 square foot house, uh, which is 300 feet more than's permitted. But I think the point that others have made, and I, 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 I'll just repeat it, is that the combination of size and style is completely inconsistent with the neighborhood. And I'll add one other thing, especially from the back of the house. One of the things that I think we would all be worried about 
is having a, a pool with a stone patio in an area that uh, floods and where the runoff down from this house, which is on the hill towards the houses below, are going to it could potentially present a serious problem. I know that's not your problem to begin with, but we would urge that if there's anything to be put in the back that the developer consider a wood deck or something else that was pervious rather than uh, the stone patio and pool that the developer has proposed. Yeah, well, of course, things like the, like, as we said, the measurement, but also pervious coverage, uh, water runoff, all those things are, are covered by, by other constituencies. Um, and, and generally the building um, inspector and the building department determine which, uh, you know, because they're the most familiar with the code and so forth, what, you know, which boards it needs to go uh, before. Um, I don't know the specific rules myself on those things, but just clarifying the process. So, so that, um... The zoning compliance is not the purview of this board, but it is something that um, can be taken up with um, the building department who, who needs to issue the permit um, and, and the village can review whether or not additional approvals are required, et cetera. But that, that is not the scope of this board. I, I understand that. I, I guess I would just urge the board to ask the building inspector to review those numbers before you were to take any action on this plan. Because as I say, I would, would hate to have you approve a plan that ultimately is not zoning compliant and that would then uh, have to go back in any event. Yeah, well, even if we did approve it, it, it still must be zoning compliant. We're, That's correct. Where we, where, we tend, where we tend to be the last board, we're not the final say. Uh, so if, if we've approved it to be, you know, Something that we think, you know, our, our general gist is that it, it should not be detrimental to the neighborhood by uh, virtue of being either too conformist or not conformist enough or things like that. There's written criteria, but they, even if we determine that that's okay, it still has to meet zoning and planning and, you know, coastal, all those things still have to be met, whatever we say. Right, but it is also true that within your purview is making sure that the building's size is consistent with the neighborhood and this building size is not. That's iffy because there is a zoning, you know, allowance where we have to, you know, if, if you're allowed to build that much, it's a little hard for us to say, no, that's, that, that impinges on the value of somebody's property. Um, you know, that's, that's a dicier issue to say that it's, too big when it's as of right. I, um, I, I understand that. But again, when you combine size and style. No, that, that point is valid. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Mr. Stirk. Appreciate your staying with us so long, too. And <laughs> can I ask a question, Amber? Yes. Is, um, you know, as, as, as neighbors have come along, it, I guess it's become clear to me that this house is being built not for the person who plans to live in it. Is is there any is there any um, person who who is <laughs> has personal interest in this house that they want to live in it who's going to come forward to talk to defend the house? Uh, that would be a question for the architect, who I believe is the applicant of record. Yeah, I have a client that I represent. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, is that client playing? Does that client want to speak for the house, or are they? Uh, they've. I was just curious if they were there. They've entrusted me with their uh, application. I see. Okay. Okay, so I will take the next speaker, Kathy Maloney. If you could please introduce yourself for the record. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi. Thank you all. I know it's been a long evening. Um, I just want, I agree with everything that has been said uh, previously by uh, my neighbors. Mm -hmm. I actually live on Shore Acres Drive and my property abuts uh, this property. 
And um, so I just want to add, I, I have been educated tonight. Thank you very much. I now understand more fully what the architectural review, review board scope is. But um, I just want to note that um, uh, the concern is the concern. I have the same concerns that everybody else has. But you know, it, it, the thing I'd like to add for consideration is privacy, and um, and also that the style of the house is such that there are so many windows that there would be. Um, uh, I have uh, real concerns about uh, privacy with relate with respect to um, light. Um, and uh, certainly noise and, and also the, um, the location of the pool. I think that, that is a serious, uh, that could be a serious issue. Um, but again, I won't take up any more of your time because I know that's not your purview, but I'm, I'll just add that. Um, there are neighbors just, and I'll, stop, I'll end with this, neighbors in the back on Shore Acres Drive that are impacted by the house as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, appreciate it. I think there's still a few more people who wish to yes, speak. Yes, there are five more. It just takes me some time to <laughs> okay. maneuver people around. I was actually just fixing to for how many more that was. <laughs> so we have five hands raised. Um, John Michaels, if you would please introduce yourself for the record. Hi there. You guys hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm John Michaels. I live at 539 Oakhurst, which is the house right across the street. There was a photo that was shown of my house. It wasn't, uh, it was, it, it kind of showed my house, but it was obstructed by um, uh, the trees. My house is, is a Tudor. I moved in in uh, 2006. Um, and, uh, you know, you've heard a lot of different reasons why the house that is being proposed doesn't fit the character of really what's in the neighborhood. And I would, you know, join in um, what um, my neighbors have said about the house. And I thought it was important that you hear from me because I am one of several people that um, lives directly in the vicinity of what is going to be built. Um, and I think you're going to find on this call with all of the applicants, every single person, um, every single neighbor that is around this house that's being built um, is here at this hearing tonight and has sat through this hearing to let you know of our, our feelings about this house and how we would like some changes to be made in terms of the design. And one of the questions that you asked um, some, you know, some of the speakers was, is it possible to have a 5,000 a square foot house um, on this um, on this street, and I think the 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 problem is that this particular lot is so long, and if you compare the footprint of this house with all the other house, it's it's dramatically different in terms of its length. And so, you know, perhaps it is possible to have a a, a five thousand square foot house, um, but perhaps the house has to be. Uh, deeper um, and um, and uh, and not not as long across the front, or or perhaps it's not possible, um, you know, with um, you know with the style and and with uh, the character of all the other houses. And so I would oppose the the application and ask that the board uh, uh, deny the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. All right, um, and let's uh, move along then. Rylan Carter, if you could please introduce yourself for the record. Good evening, can everyone hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Raya Lynn Carter and I live at 544 Oakhurst Road, right next door to the proposed building. Um, and I don't wanna take much of everyone's time. Um, I will just agree with the sentiments of many of my neighbors um, that this house is 
surprisingly large um, and totally out of keeping with the size of the other homes on the street. In fact, I believe that the underground footprint of the home is nearly the size of my entire house combined. Um, and I understand that the developer who bought this land needs to maximize his profit um, when he eventually sells and moves away. Um, but I'm just not so sure that it always needs to be maximizing every single possible square inch of space on that property. Um, it is a beautiful large piece of land and I understand that progress will be made and a beautiful house will go in its stead. But I'm not sure that it needs to be quite as large as it is and, and completely fill the borders of the property itself. At this point, my young children who play on my side screened in porch will now be 12 feet away from a generator. And while that may pass code, um, I would just ask the board to look at things like this and the quality of life of the residents who live here and plan to live here long beyond this developer who will not be living here. Thank you. Thank you. Emily and Phil Durand, if you could please introduce yourselves for the record. Um, we, we can't hear you. Well. Were they talking about the other house? Yes, I think so. You have to press star, star six. Um, Dennis, is it star six, star 16, 16? 16, um, no, it's, it's star, star it's, six. It's, it's on, on the, the agenda. agenda. It is on the agenda. Yes, star, star six. Star six. Yeah. Maybe bring someone else in, in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so we have a neighbor. Please introduce yourselves for the record. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Hello. My name is Priscilla Shickley. My husband is here with me. His name is Niberto. Checkling. We're at 615 Oakhurst Road, and we can see the property where this building is being proposed from our kitchen window. Um, I, I won't keep you long because I know it's very late. And I know everyone's tired, but I would just reiterate exactly what the other neighbors said. The design of this house is not at all in keeping with the Oakhurst neighborhood or really the shore, the Oakhurst block or really the shore acres neighborhood. There is no other house on Oakhurst that looks anything like this house. So my strongest objection is really to the design. I do agree with also with the rest of my neighbors that the size also um, combined with the design makes it so completely, completely out of character and it, it would really stand out um, in, in this neighborhood as not as not fitting. Um, and you know, Greg referred to his, his client. His client is a developer. That's who bought this property. They lived in it for a year. Um, it'll take them a year to build it, and then they'll meet their tax deduction when they when they flip it. So they're not invested in putting up a property that is in keeping with, with our neighborhood or our street. That's it for me. I don't know. Okay. Um, if I could just ask... Um, Barbara, were you able to catch 
your name, you're, you're breaking up a little bit in the beginning and I wanna just make sure that you're, for the record, that they got your name, Amber and Barbara. No, not at all. Okay. Could you please uh, say your name? Yeah. This is Priscilla and Roberto. No, uh, you're breaking up. Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you, but when you say your name for some reason, it breaks up. Oh, how about this? Let me do it. Um, Priscilla. Okay. Kathleen, C-H-A-C-L-I-N. You can also rename your yourself on Zoom. Well, if I was that clever, I could. Uh, if you click the right, up, upper right oh, option. There we go. Yes, yeah, so that's the way you can see it. All right, six minutes. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. Shacklin. Okay. Thank you so much. You asked a question before about are we opposed to modern architecture? I wanted to clarify. I can't speak for the rest of my neighbors. Personally, I'm a huge enthusiast of modern architecture. If I had to build my own house, it'd be a glass block. This is not modern architecture. This is commercial real estate. It looks like a dental office. I've heard bank. I've heard hotel. And then some others I heard say maybe it's a beautiful home. It's not a beautiful home. This is absolutely an ugly commercial real estate looking thing. It doesn't look like a house. So I, I would be really clear on, let's not even talk around or share that this is a nice looking house. It is absolutely not. And I don't think this is anywhere near modern architecture, the way I understand modern architecture and the way some of the other homes that you just referred to in, in Orienta are beautiful modern homes. This is not anything like that. So anyway, I just wanted to clarify since you asked that question about um, you know, are we opposed to modern architecture? I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Does that work? Hello. This is uh, Emily and Phil Durand. We were, we were the ones who had the microphone issues before. Um, so one of the things that uh, you know that concerns me about the house was the uh, was the size and you know looking through the uh, you know some of the conditions uh, that the architectural review board just preparing for today was um, you know some of the disapproval reasons were you know size is specifically listed um, it says a big piece of building design size and one of the items is gross floor area so. Uh, this particular house at 5,000 or 5,500 square feet plus a 2,000 2, square foot basement um, is quite a bit larger than the homes on that particular street. So I pulled all the data for the homes on, on the street. And the, uh, you know, the largest house is 3,700 square feet on that street. So this is 50% bigger. I mean, and if that basement ever gets finished, you're, you're miles bigger. So you know, in terms of keeping with the houses on the street, you've got a range from 2,300. Most of the houses- I'm sharing this right now. Okay. I'm sure uh, the one that's being shared right now is all of Shore Acres, the whole Shore Acres Peninsula. So I pulled all the home sizes for, you know, the parkway, all of Shore Acres Drive, everything on that peninsula. And, you know, if you look out to the right, there's a few blips. This would be the fifth biggest home in all of Shore Acres. This includes the marquee properties on Long Island Sound, which are on an acre of land. This includes the ones, you know, some of the large houses that, that overlook, um, you know, the pond at the, the north end of Soundview and the, um, uh, the, the Otter Creek Preserve. I mean, there's only a handful. And we're talking about, I mean, I don't know what's so special about this particular piece of land that we have to maximize it. But, you know, just comparing with the street, it, it doesn't seem to fit, right? We're at least 50% bigger than the largest house. And, you know, we're talking 60, 75% bigger than uh, the median house on the street. So when we look back at the rules for, for disapproval, you know, I, dissimilarity, I don't know how much bigger we could get before we would say, you know, this might be a bit big. And the question was posed, you know, if this house is permitted to have uh, you know, a 5,000 square foot house. I, I still don't see why that should, right? It might not fit. This particular long skinny plot means the length of the frontage of this house is massive. I mean, you're gonna be walking your dog, you can be 10 minutes to walk past the front of this house. Um, so it may be that because of the plot, you, you can't fit a nice looking house on it. I mean, it's, 
you know, that, I don't see why we should be uh, too concerned about the profitability of the developer, right? If it's a 3,500 and, it, and it's the biggest house on, tied for the biggest house on the street, that, that seems perfectly acceptable. Okay. I'd yeah. like to share that there was an offense around that pool and the rendering. I'm sure you're going to have one. And I suspect it might not have been shared because that would have made that design look a little bit too prison-like or too school-like to be, to be a good member of the community. Do you have anything else you want to add? I lost my piece of paper. Yeah. Could, you okay. just, could you just say where you live? Just yeah, sorry, we're, we're directly behind the property at 575 Shore Acres, so. Yeah. Oh, and okay, yeah, we're, we're right behind. So we're on Shore Acres and we're, you know, we walk past, you know, the new development at 648 oh, yeah. Shore Acres, which is 8,000 square feet, which, you know, it passed the review board, it was under the FAR. Um, we've been learning a lot about kind of what is allowed and, and not allowed. And, you know, it looks like a nice house. Um, but as soon as it started going up, I think it looked like a nice house on paper. But once you draw in the rest of the houses, you realize that it's like Smurf Village. Um, th this house takes up, you know, it's wall to wall, it's max size, it's so in your face. You can see it from the other end of the street. And I think we have so many of our neighbors that have joined the call tonight because we've seen this house go up. And we realized, you know, as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, like, wow. Uh, it, it's possible to it's possible to you know go too big, um, even fitting in within the rules. So back to the question of should you, you know, you might be permitted, but but should you is a different question, and I think that's the one that we sh we should focus on. Thank you. Thank you. We should appreciate your thoughts. Okay. Okay. Amanda Kearney, please introduce yourself for the record. Hi. Um, so I'm Amanda Kearney, and Brett, my husband, was supposed to be here too, but he actually packed it in a couple of hours ago. <laughs> no staying power there. So I live at 521 Oakhurst Road. I'm across the street and slightly adjacent from the property in question. I can see it easily from my front yard. I echo the sentiments of all my neighbors, Stuart, Alyssa, Nick, Raya, and Emily. Oakhurst is beautiful. It has so much character. I live in one of the Tudors, not the one of the ones that Mr. Lewis showed. And the rendering and scale of this house is just not in keeping with the beauty of the street. And I just can't divorce the issue of aesthetic and community here. One of the things that I liked the most about Shore Acres, and I looked for two years before I moved away from the city, is how the community here is so strong and it's not transient like a lot of the other Westchester neighborhoods that we see. But when a developer moves in here with no intent to build upon that community, um, but instead comes in with the sole intent to move within a year and to maximize profits by leaving behind an eyesore, that community is just corroded. I like modern architecture actually, really, really I do, but this is sterile and it is just too large for the property. I understand that's less relevant here. Maybe if it were softened a little bit, shutters, less dark coloring, not sure. Mr. Lewis is good at this, I'm not. Um, I might protest less. And also I mastered in environmental sciences and the pool and the patio um, and the flooding in our area that just goes against every fiber in my being. Um, I don't love the house that's there now, actually, but this just isn't right for our street. Um, so I just want to keep this neighborhood as great as it, as it is, and I really thank you for your time tonight. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Um, Amber? Amber? Yes. I just wanted to point out that somebody in the question and answer uh, section is, all, is asking how to get on. Yes, that person also has their hand raised, so they just need to wait for me to get through all of the people in order. I'm just taking okay, people just as they appear. Question. Yes, you haven't seen it. Thanks. So you're up next, Allison Stabile. Please introduce yourself. For the record, you need to, you need to unmute. I'm trying. You're you're unmuted, you're unmuted. Allison. Can you hear Am you? I unmuted? 
Yes, you have on red glasses and you're smiling, yes. <laughs> okay, so I don't have a ton to add, but um, I feel uh, compelled to join in. I live at um, 572 the Parkway. I actually live directly behind Amanda, the last speaker. Um, I've lived here for nearly 30 years and I've seen a lot of changes in Shore Acres. And I will also echo what several other people have said that there is something really important and dynamic about this community that draws you in. And when you find it and you know it's the right place for you, as I think some of you folks who live out in um, Orienta uh, expressed because you all walk by that house that you spent so much time considering um, on Rushmore. Um, I was actually kind of struck by, by the, the way you all focused in on, on that house and, and how concerned you were about the new part not blending in with the old part and, and the materials and the e -pay. I actually put an e -pay deck on, my, on, my, on, a, on a little new addition that I did. So I, I was really appreciating the, the care and concern and the time that you spent um, sort of going over uh, what that gentleman was doing or, or not doing with that addition to that house. And, and I will also say that um, I'm not, I don't object to modern art either. I actually um, don't object to modern art. I, I mean, not modern art, mod modern architecture. Um, but it has, to, it, it has to be able to fit in with the neighborhood. It has to be able to have some comportment, some relationship. And when I looked at the at this house, um, at this proposal, all I all I felt was this starkness and this sort of affront. You know, I felt affronted, and um, because there are so many, and this isn't your purview, but I will say there there are so many water problems with it in this neighborhood that you guys aren't. Con you know, don't have to consider. I will say that when I look at a, 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 a proposal like this and all I see is all those impervious surfaces and all that starkness and knowing what is yet to come after this 5,000 square foot house is put in, after that patio is put in, after all that, and knowing that that property has been basically able to suck up water, you know, and, and, and protect the surrounding neighbors for all those years, even though it's a funny little hobbit house, you know, once that's ripped down and you put in this enormous sort of, you know, in, uh, I'm not gonna denigrate it because obviously Mr. Lewis took a lot of care to, you know, to, to produce that, um, that rendering. But uh, I think that there are, are serious quality of life issues that need to be considered um, by this board and, and those, cons uh, the, those quality of life issues extend to, uh, because you can't really consider water, I will say light and air and space. And when you are confronted by something that basically takes up the entire width of a property like that, because you can, you are depriving all of the other people surrounding that, that property of light, space, and air, and maybe that's not you. You know, that's not to code and stuff like that. But it, you know, go down, and, I, and I'm sure some of you had something to do with the house on Shore Acres Drive, and maybe those drawings didn't look, you know, problematic. But now that that structure is up, you really need to look at the impact that that project has had on the surrounding neighbors. And tonight, you heard. Um, you heard from the property owner directly next door, except all the photographs were of the old house that was removed from that property. So you don't even get to see, I mean, for those who are attending tonight, don't even get to see the impact and the scale of that project on, on the surrounding homes because that home wasn't you know, in the pictures. So I, I'm just saying that there are consequences that, that you know, down the road that aren't really, quite being considered here. And I, 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 I beg you to, you know, not set up the folks on Oakhurst and I'm, you know, they're all directly behind me and I don't need to say all the things that they said again, but I'm begging you not to do to those folks what has been done to the surrounding neighbors on Shore Acres Drive. And, and by the way, to the folks on Guyon Drive who have to look at the back of that property. So 
Kathy Maloney and the Durans and anybody else who is kitty corner to this 530 Oakhurst is going to be impacted, you know, because it's not just the people on the street and it's not just me that's, you know, on the street over, it's everybody around and, and people who, you know, interact with the neighborhood on a daily basis. So sorry for going on and on, but, you know, I, I've just seen a lot of things happen and, and, and the impacts are felt long after everybody's, you know, gone on their merry way. So um, please, I hope you'll consider my thoughts. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. I do not see anyone else who wishes to speak. Okay. Um, maybe before we go on and before we vote, let me uh, just read something which might help clarify it for the, the board, uh, like what our purview is. We've all seen it, but I'll just, just to clarify. Um, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Mamaroneck finds that certain undesirable effects may arise from an extreme design of buildings or structures, excessive uniformity of nearby structures, and excessive incongruity of a building or structure in proximity with more typical buildings or structures may adversely affect the desirability of a neighborhood by reason of comfort, general welfare of the inhabitants, <laughs> and stability of assessed valuation. And further, it may so deprecate the immediate vicinity and that a disproportion exists between the taxes and the costs of municipal services. And then it goes on to kind of explain that it's our job to, you know, consider that and so forth and so on. So that I just thought it would be helpful to put into context, you know, what our specific job is, if you will. Okay, that, that done, um, are there any uh, further comments by board members? Well, right now I just, I heard, I mean, there is a real concern of a whole neighborhood for this upcoming new house. And I think we need to listen to them. And I would like to look into it a little bit more. I didn't have the chance to go look at it, but uh, I would like to go and take a look at the street. I, I, I haven't been there. So that, that's my, my opinion right now. Okay. And I have a few comments to say, I mean, some of the board, um, some of the caller, callers had some good points. Well, like, what about softening up the, the house a little bit? What about taking it down in size a little bit? Are there considerations after hearing from all of those neighbors? It's true. If there isn't, there probably isn't one neighbor on that street or surrounding area that seems to be in favor of this home. And yeah. is there a recourse? Mr. Lewis, something that can be done between you and the owner to, you know, make it more palatable for the neighborhood. You're, you're muted, Mr. Lewis. So am I. I'll wait for all your comments and I'll, I'll address that, Chair. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I am familiar with the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I did tour the neighborhood anyway, but I am familiar with the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, as I spoke right at the beginning, I, I wasn't really that fond of the house. I thought it was out of character and oversized for the for the property. Um, and I don't have any. I don't have any. I mean, it's not my it's not my favorite type of looking house, but I would have accepted it. I think if it had been scaled differently, maybe it'd be integrated with uh, landscaping differently and. Um, <coughs> So I'm um, at this point. I'm not in favor of the house. I'll just say tell you that. And uh, I guess and, and I certainly took the neighbor's um, yeah. sentiment to heart, which right. is I think yeah. does have some merit here, particularly since the um, we don't believe that the owner has any stake in in being part of the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. 
it's very conflicting when you hear all of all of the neighbors mm -hmm. yeah. and their concerns. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you want to give a comments as well? What? I asked uh, William if he wanted to give some comments. I, I was going to just say that I I do not object to the uh, style and, and architecture of the house, and as to the size of the house, um, you know. We, we can't we can't take value away and whether it's measured or right or not is not is not our purview that said just because it's the right size and and i like the design of it clearly there oh, are issues with the neighbors and and you, there are five thousand square foot houses as somebody pointed out could be narrower and deeper there's other ways to do it um where it reduces the mashing um so, you know, it is, it is an issue that this is, uh, at least in the view of, of many of your neighbors, uh, Gregory, that they feel that it detracts from their home and their community. So that said, uh, obviously you should respond. <laughs> yep, that'd be great. So no, I appreciate all the neighbors' comments. And I appreciate your views and, and insights. Uh, and, as an architect, I embrace the site and the length of the site and tried to play that up. Uh, but it sounds like that that design direction uh, that I chose along with my client and the, our team uh, was in, inappropriate for the area. So uh, I'd be willing to come back. Um, the to, to scale it, to change the scale and the design of the project, um, I realized that, uh, 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 trying to say the best way to say this, there's certain entitlements that come with a large lot that uh, a homeowner has the right to build on. Um, but we can certainly articulate it differently and change the uh, layout so that it, uh, it can be changed the mass and the scale. I uh, actually was thinking a lot about the neighbors as far as height and scale, because if I went with a large farmhouse style, we'd actually be, have a much taller house. So uh, again, um, if, if it was incorrect or inappropriate, and I, I appreciate the, the input, and um, I think what I'd like to do is just mute my camera and for a second and then come right back on. <laughs> I guess that means speaking with his. <clears throat> so my wife had to confer on it. It's Lewis and Lewis, and I'm the lesser half of Lewis. <laughs> okay. yeah. She's okay. my uh, my coach here. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, if I miss the mark, I miss the mark. I, I, I really uh, like Shore Acres and not interested in irritating uh, some future clients, I hope. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be back in a few weeks. Yes, and, and your point is good, and I, I feel that as well. That you know, it, it's not if if the if the if you're entitled to build a five thousand square foot house, and it's not us for us to say you can only build a twenty five hundred square foot house, right. but, but it has to be something that that doesn't you know di disrupt the character of. Yeah, the, I mean, I'm not interested in irritating yeah. a whole neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah, so, since I live, I, I bike through the neighborhood a lot, actually. But uh, well, I hear uh, that the neighbors are saying, and uh, hopefully we can come back with a better, um, a better design yes. that would would uh, would have them embrace the design. Yeah, and that sounds good. You, you might encourage your client to be more a, a, a part of the community too. I think input from him and talking to people <laughs> go a long way for you. I'll sure. you, but that's yeah. just a thought. Okay. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I guess we're not voting then. We'll uh, defer. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, I'd like to come back with uh, revised sketches. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Sure. Okay. And that brings us to the <laughs> buffering. <laughs> okay. Last applicant who deserves some kind of a. <laughs> It's not, it's not a medal at least brownies or something i don't know <laughs> i think we do too know. yes uh, 453 yeah. palmer avenue mm -hmm. 
Maybe they fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's here. There she is. Hello. 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 Michael and uh, Oscar. Hello. Well, I apologize for having uh, you. You're having to uh, spend so long. So it's very interesting, I have to say. <laughs> uh, well, good, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Um, we're here for an application for, actually, we need to start off, I'll put it right up on the screen. And you, sir, you are the architect? I'm Michael Stein with Hudson Engineering. Okay. I'm not typically going to architecture review board mm -hmm. meeting, so I'm usually at planning and zoning. Um, so uh, what we're looking at is uh, the, the, a reconstruction of an existing driveway that had access to the garage. Uh, the new driveway will be coming up to this point in through here. Um, the, the, there'll be like a courtyard in front of where the, the existing garage is that will become a, like a patio area. Um, we have new walkways coming uh, both at the rear of the house and also at the front of the house. Um, uh, the owner's here with me this evening um, and I can put up some photos of just the different um, uh, photos of the existing uh, of the existing house of concepts of, of <clears throat> materials and, and what it's anticipated to look like uh, for the for the new uh, the, the basically the driveway is going to be cobblestones and the new uh, sitting area or patio area will, will basically be a, a pea gravel a pea gravel surface okay, um, okay. Uh, sorry okay um, Yes, just sticking with this a second. First of all, just to clarify something which had confused me, but um, Amber explained it to me, uh, and just so everybody else knows. My understanding is that the garage you're changing into a, a studio. And right. no, that, that's a so, mistake, actually. So what happened is um, there was a misunderstanding with our engineer. The garage is not changing at all. We're leaving it as is. So it's a garage. Oh, so it's yeah. It stays as is. So what's happening is we we are trying to be on the same footprint at the as the current driveway, mm -hmm. but uh, changing it slightly. So it's a you know more or less the same size at the beginning, and as you go to the garage, we're expanding it to have more like a sitting area to put a table and uh, you know a couple of chairs. Uh, so all this is actually gravel. So the whole thing is gravel. The beginning is cobblestone, and we will show you an example from the picture from um, that Michael will share with you. And then this, if you go back to the to the plan, um, Michael. So and then this part here, I don't know if you see my mouth, but uh, this part which is going to the house and then to the street again, um, uh, we're moving a walkway from uh, you know uh, a little bit more of the middle of the lot to closer to the street so that it goes into the entrance door, the back entrance. Okay. So and then, right now, this, this walkway here will be removed and walkway yes. will be moved closer to forward. So it mm -hmm. accesses more from where the area where the, the driveway will be. Yes, exactly. And then in the front, it doesn't change. It's just changing from the current driveway, which is some kind of um, concrete, pink concrete into oh. cobblestone. Over here. In the front. Yeah. No, not here, uh, Michael, just to the front to, towards uh, Palmer. Yeah, here. Exactly. Okay, here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, will, will cars be going into the garage? So the cars will stay in the first part of the driveway mm -hmm. uh, because the rest will be a sitting area. If we wanted, we could possibly put the car back in the garage, but it's not supposed to be like that. Okay. So the garage is staying as it is, but you'll repurpose it somehow. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Right. There's no changes being made to the actual structure of the garage. Okay. There's a pergola there, I see. Right? Do you yeah, have any drawings of that? I didn't see any drawings unless unless I missed it. No, you, you're right. Actually, we didn't provide drawings of the pergola. So it it's supposed to be a 12 by 12 feet pergola. It's very small. And uh, it's there to put to make a difference between the driveway part and then the uh, sitting area. And what holds it up? 
it's in wood. No, I meant there's where are the columns? Are they in the corners or the four the four corners? Four corners. And how high is it? Twelve feet. Do you have any sketches of it? We don't have any sketches of the pergola. Is, is, does that mean like you haven't done it yet? You haven't figured it out yet or what? We did actually, but uh, Oscar, maybe you can comment. Uh, so Oscar was going to build the pergola is on the line as well. And maybe he can comment. You on mute, Oscar. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so the pergola is gonna be um, is gonna be made out of uh, uh, wood. Okay, all pressure treated. Um, it's gonna be on four corners. It's all gonna be cinder block, but the cinder block is gonna be um, stone veneer. At the top of the uh, stone veneer is gonna have a, a blue stone. Okay, it's like a blue stone slab, and then um, the pergola will go right into those uh, columns. So it'll be twelve by twelve by twelve. Um, foot high. Yeah, I don't think I followed that at all. No, me either. <laughs> it's yeah, a sketch would be better, I think. <laughs> a sketch of what it looks like. I can send you a, probably a picture right now. All right. Yeah, just something, just so we have a little sense of it. And and by the way, as we're looking at the plan, my understanding is that oh, we lost the plan, but I'm the, sorry. right along the along the, the street. Up. Yeah, so along the street, there's a there's an extant portion that it says material storage. I assume that that's for during mounting the project, right? Correct. That, that these are temporary measures: uh, silt fence, concrete, um, okay. concrete washout area, and just material storage as it's delivered for construction. Sure. Okay, just wanted to be sure. This is basically the the stormwater management plan and sediment erosion control. Uh, got it. The, while he's doing that, maybe share pictures of. Yep, <clears throat> Michael. So that's the a picture, a photo of the existing driveway. And that's the existing garage. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So nothing changes there. No. Right. Nothing. No. Okay. Yeah. So we're rebuilding the driveway, uh, but yeah. we're changing uh -huh. the material, so it's going to be. Um, yeah, cobblestone. Yeah, no, yeah, it's going to be actually gravels and the, the front part, as you can see in this picture. So that's an example, you know, so towards the street, it will be cobblestone and then it's going to be gravels. And then the front walkway, it's looking at doing more flagstone with cobbles, um, Belgian, Belgian block edging. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. I sent you the pictures, uh, this one. Um, are you able to share with them? Who did you send it to? Uh, I sent it to, um, I just sent it to your, your phone. To Michael or to me? Yeah, yeah to yours. Um, I don't know if you're able to share. I mean, I can, I don't know if you're able to see it like that. So, I, yeah, I can send, I can, let me see. I can email you, Michael. Is that uh, you, Yeah, you'd have to email to me. Yeah, yeah and, and these were not posted or shared with the record. So are these new new materials? Yeah, so so we've we completely missed the pergola. We didn't send you any information on the pergola. So if that's an issue, we could do that as a second step and go ahead, you know, with the whole um, driveway because it's already, you know. Sure. Okay. You know, it's probably yeah. easiest, right? Uh, why don't we do that? And why don't you just uh, come back another time, uh, hopefully earlier on in the uh, session? <laughs> um, maybe maybe <laughs> oh, in his, uh, continued business instead of old business, and you can be in the front. And let's let's we can look at everything with the exception of the pergola, which will exactly happen. that would that would be great. Okay. Okay. And if if I may. Um, if you can, this is Dennis Drogan, the assistant building inspector. Um, my email is on the website. If you can reach out to me tomorrow, we can have a discussion about the pergola prior to the meeting. 
for setbacks and so forth. Okay, sorry, your name is? Dennis Drogan, D-R-O-G-A-N. Okay. Thanks. So, but I'm gonna send to Michael the pergola picture. If you yes, you will, you will need to come back um, for another hearing date. You need to provide new, whatever new materials um, you have so that they can be posted publicly and shared with the board members so that they can <clears throat> review them and comment on them. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. But we can still, uh, we're still gonna vote on the driveway part, okay? Um, so do you want to go back to the picture of the neighborhood yeah, and the front? So everything, let's go back. We're, I think basically it's just, we, we just can't vote on the um, pergola, but I think we can on the driveways and the okay. yeah. So, so you've got... I don't know if you have any question on this piece and otherwise we can show you pictures of the neighborhood and Okay, one, one question I have on, on the, the, the driveway that's cobblestone and then gravel. Um, is it just, how, it's, it's hard to tell from this picture where the, where the cobblestone stops and where the gravel begins. And I think the reason is because there isn't, doesn't say. Um, how much of it is, where does, how does that work? Is it just like, six like a few feet of cobblestone and the whole rest is gravel yes exactly like, like it's normally done with uh, macadam yeah okay yes. okay so basically it'll be the sidewalk and then an apron and then the apron after the apron will be uh cobblestone okay and is the driveway lined with belgian block or something too or correct so would hold all the uh Rock. Okay. So everything, the walkways and the driveway are all aligned with Belgian block. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? You want to see pictures? You saw the, I guess we saw the pictures. Any other board, board members, anybody need to say anything no. else? Any questions? No, I mean, I'm fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, then um, I guess we could take a uh, motion to vote on the, uh, the driveway and walkway. Um, mm -hmm. And Oops. yeah, I'll make a motion. Oh, I, I don't know if there's, if, I don't know if there's community. Is there community? <laughs> what? Yeah, thanks. I, I forgot to ask if there's anybody else, any neighbors. I do not see anyone raising their hand indicating that they wish to speak on this application. Okay, thank you. Thank you for reminding me, Andrew. And <laughs> now, where were we? <laughs> so I will make a motion now. <laughs> okay. I will now make a motion. Okay. And I had second it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Any opposed? No. Okay, so approved, uh, but not, not mm -hmm. as with respect to the pergola. Okay. Great, thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank you for staying up this thank late. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for welcome. staying up this late. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Bye bye. Bye now. Good night. We're leaving. Uh, board members, <laughs> stick on for just a minute, guys, before. Yes. Okay, yeah, sure. After the recording, it'll take only a, a, a minute, I promise. Yes, 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 yes. I have a question for you when we stop recording, too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We have to make a motion to uh, adjourn. To stop, right? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Somebody okay. motion. And I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay I'm going to guess nobody's opposed. <laughs> no. This is my longest one to date. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's almost 12. Yes. Wow. Wow. Well, exactly. Okay. I knew it would be. Um, sorry. So, so you are, are, am I stopping the recording? Yes. We have voted oh, to adjourn. Please. Yeah. Please. To adjourn. Yes.